hour by hour, step by step. We're right here with you all the way. All the way, absolutely. And remember, this is just the beginning of Hurricane Ian. Ian is almost parallel with Key West right now. We heard Matt Devitt talk about that. But we, of course, are here in southwest Florida. We want to get down to Collier County. That's where Wink News reporter Lauren Leslie is. She's live at the Naples Pier. Lauren, obviously it's dark out behind you, but tell us what the conditions are like right now for you. So, Nicole, the conditions, the rain is really just intermittent. It's been picking up. It's been slowing down. But the wind, I can tell you, the wind has definitely started to pick up. And if you take a look around, there's not a soul in sight besides my photographer, Dan, and I'm going to step out of the way here. That's good news, right? It means that people are taking this seriously. They're inside, hunkered down, as we like to say. The pier, it shut down at 6 o'clock tonight. And you can see it here, that sign. It reads, pier closed, no trespassing. The gate is up. Now, about a half hour ago, I checked out the pier live cam. Now, there were still a couple people coming up to that point. You could see them snapping pictures, taking selfies, things of that nature. And, you know, that's because the pier, it is iconic. It's where families come, friends come to gather when they are here in Naples. Anglers love it, of course, for fishing. We caught up with a couple of them earlier today before the pier closed. And I'm sure, you know, some of our viewers can likely remember Irma 2017 the west end of the pier it was closed for months did not reopen of course until the summer of 2018 and we're just hoping praying that nothing happens like that with Ian but I can tell you guys the wind is picking up I'm just listening to the waves behind me Ian is definitely starting to make its presence known. Of course, we're going to be out here monitoring the conditions, bringing you updates throughout the evening. But for now, I'm going to toss it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you so much. It is, uh, yeah, the rain coming down. Sometimes it's a little bit harder than other times because we're starting to get those bands move through, and so it's changing almost constantly out there. Uh, so you're looking at that live picture of the Naples Pier, and you can see that the water is not too churned up right now. It is moving a little bit, but it's going to get a whole lot worse, especially as we push on into tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be out there, especially tomorrow, that's for sure. And Wink News reporter Zach Oliveri, though, is at the Charlotte County Emergency Operations Center. Zach, you're inside a building right now, obviously, but what's the what's the energy like inside of the building near all those people that you're around? Nicole, everyone is just preparing for what they call more dangerous da uh, damage, excuse me, than what they saw with Charlie. I spoke with the Charlotte County spokesperson who compared this storm to a four-tool player in baseball because of the surge, wind water and tornado threat that this causes. They're expecting more damage from this storm than what they saw with Charlie because of those white, those water walls compared to Charlie, which was mainly just wind. They're encouraging those who did not evacuate that they said they're, they're in serious danger over the next 24 hours and they need to do whatever they can over that time to secure their home and stay inside. They said this is not the time to go outside and see what this storm is all about. For, but for those who did heed those warnings and did take those right decisions to leave the area, they said they may expect to see some property damage when they return to Charlotte County, but most of all, they will be okay. Live in Charlotte County, Zach Oliveri, Wink News. Hi, Zach, thanks. And if you have a hurricane question for authorities, they urge you not to call 911. Charlotte County Sheriff's Office has another number that you can call. We have that up on your screen right now, 941 833 4000 941 833 4000 and the sheriff's office reminds everyone you should only call 911 when there are emergency situations. Absolutely. Okay, also the Punta Gorda Airport will close until at least Friday. The airport is closed right now, of course. Uh, so if you have any flights, uh, you know, later on this week, obviously make sure you check and check in with that airline. But we just want to tell you about those closures uh, at the Punta Gorda Airport right now. All right. Meanwhile, Sanibel Island is currently under an emergency evacuation there. Yeah. And if you're not, you know, you're, we should point out, you're not going to be forced out of your home, but you may also not get help when you need it most. Curfew also in effect there. Wink News investigative reporter Celine MacArthur live along Sanibel Causeway. Celine, what are you learning about the rescue efforts out there in Sanibel? Well, Ross, I found out that if you need fire or EMS service after 10 o'clock tonight, you are out of luck. They are leaving Sanibel Island. Now, you may be wondering why are they leaving? 
Well, EMS and Sanibel firefighters tell me when the storm gets closer, this causeway will be impassable. In fact, all of the roads are going to be too dangerous to drive on, so they're not going to be able to get to you. Now, they're hoping that you will follow their lead, get off the island, and get to safer and higher ground. Warnings, and if they're being told to leave and enter a man uh, mandatory evacuation zone, then definitely go ahead and evacuate. You don't want to be in that situation where the winds are too high for us to come out and get you anymore, and you just don't want to put yourself in a bad situation unnecessarily. Now, firefighters tell me they are really excited about how many people did evacuate. They said that was the right move, and if you're thinking about it, this is the time to go because as of right now, the roads are passable, but that will change quickly. And of course, you can count on us to bring you all the information you need to keep you and your family safe. Live on Sanibel, I'm Celine MacArthur, Wink News. All right, Celine, thanks. Naples Airport is shutting down at 10 o'clock tonight. That's going to be until further notice. The airport authority expects that shutdown to last through tomorrow and then on into Thursday. We'll let you know once it reopens. Yeah, and we have also just learned that Southwest Florida International Airport will close at 9 p.m. All those airlines canceled their flights for tomorrow as well. That's at RSW. Now, RSW recommends, that, again, you visit your airline website for any information on your travel plans. And we also want to point out that if you are in your car and you are evacuating, maybe you're stuck in traffic or in some slow moving traffic due to some of the rain, perhaps you're on Alligator Alley, 96.9 Wink FM and 101.1 Wave FM have flipped to a simulcast of Wink News. They start doing that at 5 o'clock this afternoon, so it's another way that you can get informed and follow us right here on Wink. We're all part of Wink, and uh, we're going to give you all the information that we have. Again, walk you through what's going on step by step. Yeah. The service is available. It's a great mm -hmm. resource if you lose power. Today. Yeah, really great resource, especially, again, like you said, if you lose power and you need to know what's going on and you need to listen to our meteorologists who have that up-to-date from the uh, Winkler Doppler 3X right there, you're going to get that, so make sure you tune in and just listen to us, and we're going to help describe exactly what's going on out here and kind of keep you in the loop, even though maybe you can't see us. Yeah, and you see the storm back here behind us. It's, it's uh, not too far from Key West right now. It's mm -hmm. pushing its way towards southwest Florida. We know that we're going to be involved in this situation. We're going to yeah. walk you through it. Just step by step, so hang with us. Meantime, we can tell you that the city of Naples has declared a state of local emergency. Um, uh, first, though, let's go to, over to the weather team. Let's check in with Juliana, get an update on what's going on with the storm. Juliana. Yeah, so we're paying attention here to a tornado warning now still active in portions of Collier County here. So taking a look, not terribly too impressive uh, with this signature right now seeing again this is these are the areas that are included kind of western golden gate pushing towards pelican bay vanderbilt beach but taking a look at the velocity again not really seeing uh, terribly too much rotation or anything significantly sticking out right now uh, i'm going to switch this over to miami's radar to get a different look rather than i'll turn off winks so seeing some of these brighter spots uh, but again, nothing too uh, rather significant or, or indicative of tight rotation right now. Uh, seeing winds in the upper levels aloft rather at about 43 miles per hour. Um, but right now this is purely a radar indicated potential for tornado with the storm being potentially capable of producing a tornado. And uh, it's something we've been keeping an eye on here. I'll get a closer look and put this into motion. Still tracking northwest. Uh, at rather about 20 miles per hour. So this is quickly going to push off in, off the coast rather, but I'll put a storm track on this just to give you a look at what you can expect. Areas like Vanderbilt Beach, barely kind of hanging on to that polygon there. So areas like Wiggins Pass, State Park, Delanor, Wiggins Pass um, in the next little while. It's 849 now, so areas like that in the next 10 minutes or so. If this storm holds together, I would just keep an eye out. Um, so if you fall within this warning, I would take shelter and get to the lowest level of your home, the most interior room that you can, areas like a bathroom away from windows, because um, regardless right now, as this is capable of producing a tornado, not necessarily, again, a very significant signature, seeing some of this very broad rotation here wanted to give you a look at, towards Vanderbilt Beach pushing north uh, northeast of Pelican Bay. This is tracking northwest. So again, I'll, I'll get a look here at some of the velocities. These are again rather in the upper levels of the atmosphere here, not necessarily at the surface. Still 
not a, a very impressive thing that we're looking at here. But I just want to keep you up to date. So again, if you fall within this polygon, I'll give you a look. Uh, areas, I would say, east of Pelican Bay are essentially in the clear. You can see, I'll bring back the re reflectivity to give you a look at that cell itself. Um, where you see the higher reflectivities between Pelican Bay, between Vanderbilt Beach here. Um, and again, east and south of Pelican Bay, areas like Golden Gate and Vineyards that fall within this polygon, you're, you should be fine for now. I would be taking shelter for areas like Vanderbilt Beach. Also, our producers wanted to point out to you that if you look on the screen right now, you see a road right there that's a Mockley Road, I believe. Um, so they just wanted to let you know. Okay. So you can see the conditions. Yes, yeah, it's looking rather gust gusty, as you can tell, and uh, definitely seeing a lot of heavy rain across the area. I'm gonna pull up here those active that active tornado watch covering the entirety of the southern tip of the peninsula here. This is active until 5 a.m. tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna toss it over to Matt for some more, a and, deeper look at this. And you know, you brought up a good point about the tornado watch. This is gonna be when we're trying to get some sleep. So I highly recommend you downloading our free Wink weather app. It's free, you don't have to pay a dime and you get the notifications essentially at any point from now and all the way towards sunrise. Now we hope we don't have any more tornado warnings, but that is the hand that we've been dealt at the moment. Juliana did a wonderful job tracking where we have the core of it. And it is essentially right on the line here of the tornado warning. It's passing by Pelican Marsh. So here's gonna be the general time lapse of the storm. You'll see it coming in and pushing to the northwest. And like she said, it's gonna be offshore here shortly, but the area of rotation, let's zoom on in, and it's gonna be right about here, where you see the conflict of green and red. Look at that Mercado. Mercado is probably a great way to kind of give you a reference point. It's passing by Pelican Marsh, and it's this general vicinity. Look for the contrast, the green, the red, that's where we have the rotation, Pelican Marsh Boulevard, Nothing has been confirmed on the ground. A lot of this is up in the atmosphere, but what is oftentimes pretty typical of tropical systems, they're, they're only down for about seconds, if not minutes, but they sometimes can do some pretty significant damage. Let's take a look at our correlation coefficient. And it is, uh, you know, it's, it's messy. It's messy. I don't see anything concrete that says that we have something on the ground. It's only a few minutes away from pushing offshore, saying goodbye to this cell. And I would say, let's kind, of, let's kind of measure it. It is about two miles, two miles away from pushing offshore. It's heading northwest at about 20. So again, within the next five, six minutes, we are gonna say goodbye to this system, goodbye to the tornado warning. And quite frankly, right now, the worst of it is actually out of the tornado warning. And it's right now passing by Creekside Boulevard, NCH Hospital. So here's going to be a Mockley Road. You got Tamiami Trail, Creekside Boulevard. That is the worst part of the storm and where we have the possibility of a funnel cloud, a tornado as it pushes northwest. Next up is going to be uh, Vanderbilt Drive, Naples Park Elementary. And for that very reason, let's do a final storm cone on the system to show you where it's going to be going. I would say Wiggins Pass, but here are some specifics. Naples Park Elementary by around 8.55. Wiggins Pass, there you go, as we hit the top of the hour. And that's also when this warning expires. So it does expire at about 9 o'clock. Okay, another tornado warning. Oh, the gift that keeps on giving. Here we go. Uh, we have another one. And this is the one that has had a history of rotation. And thank you very much, Juliana. This is the one that we have been tracking uh, for about the past hour or two. And very likely, yeah, the rotation is still there. Absolutely still there. And this is going to be starting to approach State Road 29. Let's talk some specifics. And uh, largely rural area, largely rural, but let's do a storm cone on this one as the area that is impacted, basically right along State Road 29. Uh, it's gonna be until about 9.15. There's the area in red, but look who's down the road. It's gonna be Lehigh Acres towards Alva. Lehigh Acres towards Alva. This is a potential tornado. You know, when we get these tornado warnings, it's either one of two things, the possibility of putting down a tornado, or we sure enough have a tornado on the ground. This is the first one. 
of the two. This is the better case scenario, but if that changes, we'll let you know. We'll do the velocity scan, see what type of wind we're dealing with here as it is approaching State Road 29 on Wink Live Doppler 3X. And some of the winds are being analyzed upwards of about 50 to 60 miles an hour. Up in the clouds, up in the storm, but that could certainly cycle and lead to increased rotation. Eh, not seeing much on the CC. Let's keep it that way. And this is the correlation coefficient and how we look at debris. If we had debris, it would be popping up as blue, green, and yellow within, within all this red. These are false echoes. You don't have to worry about that, but you would be looking at a definitive bulb and a pulse embedded within all the rain. Juliana, do we have updates on the chat associated with both of the tornado warnings that we do have? It doesn't look like there's any updates. Okay. Not hey, right now. as I always say, no, no news is good news. So the less, you know, and unless we hear that there's damage and, and debris and stuff like that, I love that we're not hearing from them and that we're not getting damage reports coming in. Uh, they have also had their hands full, National Weather Service in Miami, with tornadoes on their coast. So it's just been the nature of what we have in the atmosphere, some additional spin and some additional twist. So these are the possible tornadoes, nothing yet confirmed. Okay, and uh, Juliana, do you want to do a storm track on the tornado warning that we have in Hendry County? We'll have it pushing northwest at about 20 miles an hour. It's going to be a largely rural area of Hendry County. But there's that pocket of winds of about 50 to 60. It's going to be crossing over 29, and then we're going to be watching it heading into the northeastern corner of Lehigh Acres. And when you have the storm cone up, uh, we will punch up weather one, and that's going to be Juliana's computer. And uh, Juliana, no stranger to tornadoes, uh, she graduated from the University of Oklahoma, so she has seen her fair share of tornadoes and certainly knows how to detect rotation, which is what we have at the moment, crossing over State Road 29, largely rural area of Hendry County. And as we take a look at this area as a whole, let me see if we have any more suspect areas. And we do not at the moment. We do not at the moment. So let's keep that trend going. But we will continue to see, look at the screen, there's one area of rotation, one after another, like a train car. These will be rotating and pivoting around Ian, and that's where rotation is going to be possible. Uh, do you have the storm cone? If nothing pops up with the cities and towns, that means that we're in good shape and it's a largely rural area. But it looks like you now have the storm cone up. Yes, yeah, it looks like Lehigh Regional Medical Center falls within this northwest track right now. Sunshine Elementary School, 931 uh, p.m. Lehigh Acres uh, could see a bit of this cell, 934. Uh, so still a little while is a, a while away, but again, moving northwest at 20 miles per hour is many of these bands are very fast moving and uh, kind of booking it to the northwest there. So um, yeah, definitely with that storm cone, some areas additionally, again, Lehigh Regional Medical Center 941 and Alva 943. You can expect to see this push through um, and I'll get a closer look here at the velocity still having shown a good, let me see here. Well, Juliana, I do have an update uh, and I'm going to use your word that you said uh, the cell was booking it off the coastline now and the cell as we punch over to weather two weather two the previous tornado warning it has now pushed offshore so that thankfully is one less cell that we have to worry about that was the previous area that prompted a tornado warning uh, national weather service still has it up for some peace of mind this is old this is old they're going to be expiring this it is no longer active that's the cell it's uh, booking it off the coastline and it is racing to the northwest. So this tornado warning, done, goodbye. We have another one that we are going to be watching approaching Lehigh Acres and all the way towards Alva. So heads up, monitor the weather as these will continue to rotate in associated with Ian. Okay, and this warning is going to be until about 9.15. So for another 15 minutes, we are just going to be actively seeing if anything decides to touch down. I'm not seeing, Juliana, you would agree, I am not seeing anything that is too incredibly tight 
or showing something that would lead to a tornado. You would agree, right? I would agree. And again, taking another check with CC with the correlation coefficient, still very muddled, very yeah. um, not, not seeing any tight signature there that would be indicative of something to be concerned about right now. Yeah. So now, not to say that we couldn't have a tornado at any minute, but at least based off of radar, and that is how we look inside of these storms, nothing incredibly telling. But that could change in seconds, if not minutes. So we're going to be watching it for you, heading to the northwest at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. So at this time, now let's toss it back to Nicole and Russ. I thank you so much. Uh, you know, uh, the storm has created a lot of turbulent air. That's why we're kind of getting some of these tornado warnings that mm -hmm. have moved through here. you got to be careful. Anybody who's going to be outdoors at this point, and I know people want to go outside. They want to mm -hmm. look. They kind of want to see it for themselves. you got to be careful. Certainly, if you have video to send that is uh, valuable, uh, we would love to do it, but only get out and take pictures or shoot video when it is completely safe to do so. Last thing in the world we would want is someone to get hurt trying to get a picture or take a selfie or do something like oh, that. Yeah. So be careful out there if you're going to be outdoors. Yeah, absolutely. And that is especially true for the hours to come as this hurricane comes closer and closer to southwest Florida. Again, these tornadoes are just part of this whole system right here. So you want to make sure that you're listening to our meteorologists and when they tell you that you need to take cover you need to take cover and just be safe it's not worth it that's for sure mm -hmm. all right well meantime the u.s postal service has suspended mail delivery and also retail operations in southwest florida as this hurricane gets closer yeah usps says that they're going to start delivery again once it's safe i would think that that might be uh, maybe yeah. Thursday, probably Friday, maybe even after that. So we'll continue. Yeah, watching. time, we'll you, time will tell. <laughs> That's that. for sure. Yeah. Also, uh, as we know, Lee County Public Schools, of course, will be closed tomorrow as well through Thursday. Yeah, the district says it's going to be working with Lee County Emergency Operations Center. All the district schools that serve as shelters have been activated as well. You know, originally school was called off for Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. Now they've added Thursday as well. Yeah, and also uh, take a look at this picture right here. Five thousand guardsmen have been activated. If we can get that picture up coming up, let's see. Are we able to get that picture up? No? Okay. Well, we're going to try to get that picture up for you. Um, th they are, though, pre-positioned across the state of Florida. Uh, we have some pictures of them. I believe they were in, uh, we had a picture from Lehigh Acres somewhere mm -hmm. in yeah. that area. Um, but again, we'll get you those images once they come in. But also right now, Verizon, Verizon, the cellular service is providing unlimited calling, texting, and also data to customers. This offer begins tomorrow. It runs through October 4th. All right, we have reporters up and down the Gulf Coast. Want to get to Lauren Leslie. She is at the Naples Pier, so let's check in with her. Lauren, what's happening down there? Hey, guys, so the last time we talked, I told you that things that we're seeing out here intermittent that's the word that i've been using and it's just that you know the rain picks up it slows down and that's what we're seeing what i can tell you is that the wind has definitely started to pick up a couple hours ago we were down here the trees just at a standstill and now you know they're kind of just breezing back and forth so as that hurricane of course makes its way to our coast we are starting to see things change i'm down here at the naples pier at six o'clock the pier closed i'm going to step out of the way let my photographer for Dan get to that sign if you can read it it says pier closed no trespassing the other thing that changed in the past half hour that we talked last is that we actually saw a couple people they came down here they wanted to get you know a last glimpse check things out take a couple pictures but I can tell you that Naples police was very close behind them uh, an officer he came out he escorted them uh, to safety you know just letting people know that now is not the time to be outside and of course as that hurricane moves closer and closer our way you're going to want to stay inside hunker down take these warnings everything that we're telling you very seriously because this is a very serious situation of course we're going to be out here all night monitoring the conditions bringing you live updates so you can stay safe inside of your homes for now reporting live in naples lauren leslie wink news Hi, Lauren. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we uh, Naples Pier. It's getting wet out there. That's mm. for sure. Uh, Lauren's going to be down in that area, though, throughout the storm. Of course, she's going to be very safe. And, you know, when it's necessary, go and take shelter as well. Um, but let's go ahead and go south to Key West. Uh, check this out right here. This is flooding from earlier today. Yeah, just earlier today in Key West. It's dark. It is murky water just flowing down this sidewalk. This was during high tide, but 
again, this was the this is earlier today that flooding over in Key West. Now, the city of Naples has declared a local state of emergency. The city is at a level one activation, which means normally daily work has stopped and they are at the highest level of storm preparation in that area. Yeah, and right now that Naples Pier is closed as we just had that uh, live shot from there. So let's move on and talk about uh, Collier Transportation. Fewer transportation options as Ian moves closer. Collier County has announced that it will suspend its regular CAT service tomorrow. A lot of things are being uh, delayed. A lot of things are being canceled. A lot of things are being postponed. Just about everything probably for tomorrow is going to be shut down no matter what it is, no matter where you live in southwest Florida. Whatever services you're looking for, you're probably not going to be have those available to you uh, tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. And also Naples Airport is shutting down at 10 tonight, so just about an hour until further notice. And the uh, airport authorities expect that the shutdown will last through tomorrow and also into Thursday. RSW also closed at 9 this evening, so just six minutes ago. All of those airlines at RSW have canceled their flights for tomorrow. Here's the board. Some of the carriers have tentative plans for resuming flights on Thursday, but will depend on these weather conditions that we are going to exp we're experiencing now and going to experience. RSW recommends that you visit the airline website, though, for the most up-to-date information, especially if you have a flight later this week. Yeah, and hopefully you'll get out, but we'll see once they resume. All right, new updates on school closures as well. Yeah, a few districts have extended their shutdowns in response to Ian's path. So Lee, Collier, Charlotte, DeSoto closed through Thursday. Cape Coral Charter, Hendry closed through Wednesday. And here are some closures for colleges and universities, FGCU, Tuesday through Friday, FSW, Tuesday through Thursday, Kaiser University, Tuesday and Wednesday, Hodges University, Tuesday, 10 a.m. through Thursday. Online classes will continue as normal, and that's probably the, the newest thing, you know, since we've had COVID and so forth, so many people have gone to online classes. You can do that when there is a, even when there's a hurricane, but a lot of people are still going to lose power, and that may interrupt some of yeah. the internet connections and those kinds yeah. of things. Yeah, let's get that back up there so they can see. So if you lose internet internet connection and you have a radio or if you are evacuating, you can still listen to us and also our meteorologists giving you the latest information on this storm. So we are now simulcasting on the radio. So that is 96.9 Wink FM and we are also doing the same over on 101.1 Wave FM. Again, we are giving you the latest information. We want to keep you and your family safe. Uh, so just make sure you stick it right here with Wink News. Uh, on the radio, more right here on TV if you are able to. We'll be right back after this break. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. We're bringing the plus side to used car buying with Honda True Used. 10 model years of Honda vehicles. Plus 100 day, 5,000 mile limited warranty. Plus three day exchange policy plus one year, 12,000 mile roadside assistance equals the better way to buy used. Don't just shop used, shop Honda True Used. Charlie Crist is increasing costs, hurting Florida families. He voted for inflationary spending that exploded the cost of gas, groceries, and housing costing Florida families $500 per month. Christ voted to increase taxes on gas and opposes affordable American energy. Charlie approved the largest increase in taxes and fees in Florida history. Charlie Christ, he wants to raise your taxes. I don't like to raise taxes. I did it as governor. Would you do it again? If necessary, I would. <laughs> Every time. Shh. You think she's still awake? Don't worry. Stealth mode? Yeah. <laughs> Don't PT meetings end at nine. Oh, Red. got lost. Wait, right. what'd you guys talk about? The um, maths. Libraries. Fine, you can drive to practice this weekend. <laughs> well, that was easy. The Lexus RX, built for modern families. Get special offers on the 2022 RX 350. Chief Val Deming. An impressive history of public service. Protect and serve Florida, that's what I've done. As a police officer and as chief. Under her leadership, crime is down 40%. Most dramatic decrease in violent crime. In the Senate, I'll protect Florida from bad ideas, like defunding the police. That's just crazy. 
I am Val Demings, and I approve this message because, Florida, it's time to send a cop on the beat to the Senate. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. All right, businesses are boarding up tonight, and also so are families. Yeah, so let's go to Wink News reporter Peter Fleischer. He's live in Sarasota. And, Peter, what are the conditions up there? Russ, Nicole, the conditions are bad and sadly getting worse. You can probably see the increased rainfall that we're experiencing and the wind is picking up as well. But I do want to peel back the curtain a little bit and take you behind the scenes because we're here at the Sarasota County Emergency Operations Center and it's a place that's happening in counties all across the state. They all have facilities like this one where the most essential county personnel is hunkered down trying to take care of you and the local community that's dealing with Hurricane E. Ian, I want to explain to you exactly who is in this building. 911 dispatchers, FPL crews, law enforcement. There are dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds of community members that are working inside this building trying to answer your questions if you're stuck at home and trying to keep you safe after Hurricane Ian leaves your area. So right now the emergency staff is still focused on getting information out to people. They want to make sure that if you are staying at home and not evacuating, you're as safe as possible. But they also had a message for people that are still considering evacuating their area. They urge you to take action before it's too late. Whoever gets it, the rest of us are going to feel the brunt. We're going to feel the rain. We're going to feel the wind. We're going to get the storm surge that's going to devastate a lot of our beach areas. So please uh, get to those shelters, get to those evacuation centers. You still have time. Now, of course, as our WIC News weather team has explained all evening long, models do predict this weather to get worse overnight. And then Hurricane Ian is expected to make landfall up here in Sarasota County at some point tomorrow afternoon. But this is all still developing here at the Sarasota County Emergency Operations Center. We still have law enforcement and 911 dispatchers walking in with their pillows and bags preparing to spend possibly the rest of the week here. So emergency staff still getting their act together, making sure that they're ready once Hurricane Ian makes landfall. Myself and our photographer, Joseph, we're going to go take shelter in there as well. They actually didn't want us to come out here, but of course, conditions are allowing us to do so safely. However, they're locking the doors in a couple of hours, and we want to make sure that we're inside. However, we're going to continue to bring you the latest sights and sounds and experiences up here in Sarasota County as Hurricane Ian is expected to make landfall within the next 24 to 36 hours. So reporting live in Sarasota, Peter Fleischer, Wink News. I'm starting here with this big picture look of Hurricane Ian and what we expected to see were these spin up tornadoes in the outer bands of Ian. We are on the dirty side, as we say, of the hurricane. And uh, so getting a closer look at a currently and persistently active tornado warning here in northwestern Hendry County, uh, this cell still moving to the northwest at about 20 miles per hour. This is just to the east of Lehigh Acres, more so tracking right in between Lehigh Acres and Alva. Uh, so let me put velocity on this for you. And we're still seeing just some broad rotation. Some of those brighter spots, you can see where the data is out a little bit, but those brighter light blues and then next to the darker greens kind of indicating, again, just very broad rotation, a little bit of the stronger winds. I'll put a, a get some data in here for you um, get an idea of what those winds look like about 56 miles per hour these are aloft these are not necessarily at the surface we have yet to see any confirmation of uh, tornado on the ground this is still radar indicated from the National Weather Service I'll additionally put correlation coefficient here to kind of give a better look at what could be and so these these blues these cooler colors are what going or what are going to help indicate debris uh, whereas red is rain so seeing some debris more so not necessarily a a intense signature here in the sense of I'm not seeing necessarily a debris ball indicating a tornado on the ground but seeing quite a bit of debris ahead of the cell itself um, so again 
This is more so rural Henry County here. They have not yet extended this tornado warning. It actually looks like it just expired there live for you. Um, so currently we're keeping an eye on this cell because of still some of those areas of some broad rotation, but Fortunately, the good news here is that tornado warning has expired, so we'll keep you up to date if the National Weather Service decides to extend this, um, but it doesn't look like necessarily anything too terribly to be concerned about, and you don't necessarily have to take shelter as this has expired. However, uh, just keep in mind, I'll give you a look here at the tornado watches that are active until 5 a.m. tomorrow. These are active all through Highlands County, DeSoto, all along the coastline from Charlotte down through Collier uh, into the Everglades all the way through the southern tip of the peninsula. This is active until 5 a.m. tomorrow because we will likely continue to see these spin up tornadoes with these strong, fast moving outer bands uh, of Hurricane Ian. And this is a great graphic here to show that tornado potential. We'll play this forward and get a better idea in the next several hours through tonight. Unfortunately, we could continue to see these spin up tornadoes um, through the overnight. So be sure to uh, have your phone alerts, have your phone um, sound on so you can get those warnings and, and heed those cautions uh, as we get them and heed those warnings throughout the evening. And then even into the early morning hours, you can see Hurricane Ian nearing the coastline still can anticipate a potential for tornadoes and pushing that even forward into the late morning. Uh, so continuing to see these outer bands, um, we will likely keep an eye on some of these spin up tornadoes. But for now, I'm going to do a double check here. It doesn't look like there's any further warnings at the moment. So we're so far in the clear for any active or potential tornado threat. Uh, Juliana, thanks. Uh, you know, the, they are so choppy. Uh, mm -hmm. These bands start moving around, creates all that turbulence. There's likely going to be more, possibly more tomorrow. Of course, the weather team's going to watch all that. The main thing, they're, of course, also going to watch Ian and where that thing is headed. Yeah, and we know where it's headed. It is headed towards, towards our area. Sure. Yeah, but uh, right now, the streets, though, they're pretty quiet. Uh, it's in a city, of course, so that usually on a Tuesday night, people would be out to eat, getting some drinks and hanging out. Uh, so we want to get right over to downtown Fort Myers. That's what we're talking about. Winkus reporter Emma Heaton is live there right now. And Emma, can you tell us what it's like out there right now? Yeah, Nicole, well, certainly you're correct on, you know, being busy downtown on even a weekday. Uh, for some indication, this is City Tavern over here, and there is not a soul around. No people walking. There are a couple of cars driving, but that. That will say that the wind little, is starting uh, to satellite issue right there. Oh. Try one more time. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, I was just saying. I was just saying that the wind has been picking up a little bit. Uh, the rain too. Uh, just a couple minutes ago, we had a huge gust of wind. Um, I was extremely soaking wet when I got here because the rain was just coming down. And then that huge gust of wind felt like it almost, I'm, I'm dry, like I just showered and I'm dry. So, you know, uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on the weather down here. But again, for some indication, there's no people downtown and that's just pretty crazy to see in downtown Fort Myers. So I'm live downtown Fort Myers, Emma Heaton, Wink News. Oh yeah, that wind, especially being so yeah. close to the Caloosahatchee right there, it's gonna, you know, you'll feel those gusts of wind. And going for down sure. the street with the, the, yeah. the buildings lining, it kind tunnel. of creates that wind tunnel. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Florida Senator Rick Scott was our governor five years ago when Hurricane Irma hit, and today we asked him what his message is for us as we wait for Hurricane Ian to get here. I want everybody to be safe. Um, I worry about everybody's life. I tell everybody, take this seriously. We don't, uh, you know, the National Hurricane Center, National Weather Service. They're going to do the best they can. Storm surge is a killer. Um, Water is a killer. Um, so always think about it this way. Um, you can rebuild your house. You can't be rebuild your life. We get four foot of storm surge. You know, it's going to be hard to survive that. So four foot of storm surge would be up to uh, up to my chest. And it's going to it could come in as a wave. You get five feet, you get six feet, you get seven feet. You're not going to survive this. Rick Scott talking about uh, the storm surge and what may be coming right now. Let's send things back over to the weather team. Let's check in with Juliana. Thanks, guys. Yeah, unfortunately, it seems like I spoke a little too soon there. Now seeing another active tornado warning here in Collier County near just north of Everglades City, Marco Island. Uh, this is falling pretty much right along 
Tamiami Trail there. So take a look at this cell. I'll turn this off to give you a better look. Um, let's put velocity on it, get a look here. Um, so right now with wing slide Doppler 3X, three times more powerful, not necessarily again an, an impressive signature, seeing some of these light blues in there, which show uh, again, that's some of that broad rotation. I'll put a query on this 60 mile per hour winds and we'll take a look a little 22 mile per hour winds. so some some of that slight rotation there um, but keep in mind these are aloft and right now this is still a radar indicated uh, potential for a tornado this storm could potentially uh, produce a tornado there is not a confirmed tornado on the ground right now additionally i'll put on a correlation coefficient here kind of that tornado uh, indicator so the reds are good, the, ra the reds are rain, and then those blue signatures, those cooler colored signatures indicating debris, not necessarily seeing a debris ball or anything very significant or uh, sticking out to me right now. Um, so I'll bring it back here to reflectivity and maybe put a storm track on this. Let's take a look here. Just to give you an idea, still uh, most of these again are moving rather fast to the northwest. Um, all associated with these broad outer bands of Ian right now. So I'm going to put a track on this to the northwest, roughly right here. Next 25 minutes or so. And it's again, it's not looking like too much of a populated area it could be in, like seeing this cell in the next little while here, Reflection Lakes, 944. So in the next 20 minutes or so, moving again northwest at about 20 miles per hour. So let me do a quick check here. Additionally, with this warning, this is active until 945 in Collier County. Looks like about 600, a little over 600 people are fall within this warning. Um, so for right now, again, just keeping our eyes to the radar and Fortunately, not necessarily seeing anything too significant that is sticking out to me right now. Um, a good bit of broad rotation. This is what we've tended to see the past several hours um, of some of these parts of notches in the outer bands wanting to be a little bit persistent, wanting to have that little bit of rotation. But so far, the good news is not seeing any confirmation, not seeing any storm reports or damage reports from the weather service right now, which is what we like to see. Uh, for now, if you find yourself within this polygon and you find yourself ahead of this is moving to the northwest, so parts of Eagle Lakes, areas in Laley Resort, not necessarily in the polygon, but because these are moving rather fast, Laley Resort, I would keep an eye out and I would potentially take shelter just to be on the safer side. Uh, but Again, not very many areas falling within this polygon, but if you are in the polygon Everglades and north of Royal Palm Hammock, I would uh, seek the lower level of your of your home um, and that innermost room and that innermost space. Uh, but for now, I will send it back to Russ and Nicole because for right now, not, so not necessarily seeing anything too impressive. Uh, Juliana, thanks. Uh, breaking right now, fire services are suspended within Matt Lachey and Pine Island Fire Control. This is due to the deteriorating conditions. Emergency services now suspended. Any calls to 911 will be logged, then responded to once conditions will allow. Yeah, and the, also let's go out to uh, FDOT right here. This is the rest area on Alligator Alley. And as you can see, people are traveling. They are leaving this area. They're taking a break right here. This is a rest area. You can see people walking up, using the restroom, getting back. They're going to get back in their cars, and they're going to go ahead and go to the East Coast. Uh, again, look at all these cars. And we have been checking in on this uh, live stream right here throughout the past few hours. It's been a very steady stream of cars. A lot of evacuation orders happening within Southwest Florida. So again, you see these people traveling across the coast. Uh, we're going to keep you updated on all this, so we'll be right back after this break. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Charlie Crist is increasing costs, hurting Florida families. He voted for inflationary spending that exploded the cost of gas, groceries, and housing, costing Florida families $500 per month. Crist voted to increase taxes on gas and opposes affordable American energy. Charlie approved the largest increase in taxes and fees in Florida history. Charlie Crist, he wants to raise your taxes. I don't like to raise taxes. I did it as governor. Would you do it again? If necessary, I would. Today, push harder, 
Push forward, push vigorously. There are things that I am hiding from people that I'm trying to inspire. You can do whatever you set your mind to. I feel like a hypocrite a lot of the times. Don't give up on yourself ever. Smoking, I hide it because I'm ashamed of it. I want to get out of the shadow. I want to show people there is light away from the darkness. I am going to quit. Visit TobaccoFreeFlorida.com to find free resources to help you quit your way. My crypto's down. No coiner. Trust. This will move. Dude, they're fragging seats. Yes, Rez, hit me. I got my ult. That's 472 horsepower and 395 pound-feet of torque. Well, what's up with this team sheet? Inverted fullback and a false nine? The limited slip diff lets you hammer the throttle. You don't get it until you go all in. Poggers. Stick it in the onion bag. The Lexus IS, all in on the sports sedan. I met Governor DeSantis in 2009 when he was on active duty. He was a Navy commissioned officer and served in Iraq. When you're advising SEAL Team 1, you're making life and death decisions every day. And as someone who has served side by side with him, he is selfless and he will do what is in your best interest, not his best interest. The Navy's core values are honor, courage, and commitment. And Governor DeSantis embodied those core values on active duty and he embodies them every day as the governor of our state. Governor DeSantis is a true servant leader. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. All right, people are on the beach as we get ready for Hurricane Ian. Maybe not as many people right now, though. Yeah. <laughs> Wink News reporter Michael Hudak joins us now live from Fort Myers Beach. And I know you've seen a lot of conditions. You've seen a lot of rain out there tonight, Michael. We certainly have. Remember, guys, Lee County has the shelter in place recommendation that began at 8 p.m. on this Tuesday. And for good reason, we are seeing the most consistent wind and the most consistent rainfall that we have witnessed on Fort Myers Beach so far. In fact, about 15 to 20 seconds before our live shot started, you might have seen the camera kind of jolt down a little bit. That's because our photographer, Javier, kind of lost his hat. It flew back to over to the other side of the parking lot. We had to go and get it. I want to show you some of the consistent rainfall that's happening over there. It's light, but it is consistent. And remember, earlier today, we were showing it was on and off, on and off. Well, it has been consistently raining for about 30 to 45 minutes. The wind gust was kind of pushing the water around on the ground, so much so that when we were in the car for about 45 minutes to an hour straight, and then, okay, we're going to get ready for the live shot, right? We opened the car. Oh my goodness, the, we, you had to hold on to the door because it swung open. Uh, it happens quick, right? And so that's why we've spoken to a lot of people who live in Fort Myers Beach, uh, including someone that lives in this complex right here. I, just 20 minutes ago, they were saying that they're getting their family in the car and they're going now. Uh, remember, that shelter in place order started at 8 o'clock and the bridge to get onto Fort Myers Beach will close if it's about 40 miles an hour or above. So if they did make it out, I got their cell phone number and we'll be in con you know consistent communication with them and that family. If they did make it out, they probably made it out just on time. We're continuing to monitor the latest. We're going to continue to hang on to our hats. For now, I'll send it back to you. All right, Michael, thanks. We're going to bring in our meteorologist now and just kind of talk a little bit about this storm since about 5 o'clock since we started getting this, since we got that new cone. Things have really changed, and we realize that southwest Florida is really under the microscope at this point. Matt, let's talk a little bit about this just to begin. Starting on Sunday night, it kind of looked like it was headed to the Big Bend area. Then it started moving down towards Tampa, and now it's sliding down here. What's going on with the storm? Okay, so what's happening is these supercomputers, the American model and the European model, what they do is these models are composed of algorithms and calculus. Thankfully, we had other people to do that <laughs> calculus for us. And what they do is they analyze the atmosphere. But as we know, the future has not been written yet. And although they have an idea of all the weather players, the timing of them and the strength in which have dictated this hurricane, it's still a situation where the visualizations of what's going to happen is sometimes they either underestimate how strong the players are, they underestimate the timing of them, and that is what has happened. Mm -hmm. The trough, which is drawing this thing north, has been more significant. Mm -hmm. And it has drawn that system to the north. And the computer models were handling it weaker a couple days ago. Well, that is no longer the case. There's been more of a draw, more of a pull mm -hmm. towards our state. And unfortunately, that is why we are seeing uh, the situation that we are. Yeah, and you talk about that pool too. Earlier today, we saw in Fort Myers Beach, the water kind of do the opposite effect of a storm surge. Yeah. People pointed that out. That also happened during Irma as well. 
Talk a little bit about that too. And we also had a viewer email us asking to go through storm surge a little bit too about what exactly it is and okay. what happens too. Best way to think about it, wind is a force. Okay, so the greater the wind, the greater the force. Depends also on the direction. Mm -hmm. So with a hurricane, you have a counterclockwise motion. And literally <laughs> right behind you guys, mm -hmm. you can see that spin. It is spinning, not clockwise, but counterclockwise. So our worst case scenario for our big metro area and our populated zones would be a, and this is the worst case scenario, and this is what is right now unfolding, is going to be a landfall from Sanibel to Boca Grande because it pushes that water up because of the motion around the hurricane up the Caloosahatchee and towards our most populated areas. So greater wind, greater force, and that's why we get that water level rise. We don't have that at the moment, and you had noted that right now we have what's called negative storm surge, where that force and that wind is pushing the water out. Now, what's gonna happen is after midnight, and especially towards sunrise, we will start to slowly see the water levels go up. Now, it depends on where you're at. Um, you actually still could see negative storm surge around Charlotte County and into Lee County, but starting in Collier, it's going to start with you guys, then Lee, then Charlotte, as we hit especially the second half of the morning, and then I believe the, the main surge event is the afternoon and evening. So really start to expect that yeah. storm surge tomorrow. And it's going to go up quickly because once the eye wall pushes on shore, you got that greater wind force, mm -hmm. you could literally go from a two-foot storm surge to a five- or six-foot storm surge just like that. So it's quick. Yeah. And Juliana, also, it's coming in perhaps at high tide, which is probably the worst possible time that a hurricane could hit landfall. Yes, absolutely. And I know there's been a lot of questions with storm surge specifically, and high tide amplifies that, like you're saying. Um, so when we have essentially storm surge is that rise in the level of water above mean sea level. Um, so if you're in an elevated area, like you had been saying, living in Babcock Ranch, yep. being 30 feet above sea level, and you're not going to see that storm surge so much, whereas areas closer to the coast are just in line with sea level, we'll see that much more significantly. So with the high tide, you're adding on to that um, and, and again, amplifying it. And you did bring up a very good topic. Storm surge, I know there's a lot of confusion about it. Uh, there was even, believe it or not, even more confusion during Irma. Um, so how this works, 6 to 12 feet of a storm surge, possibility. Let's hope for the lower values. But let me throw out a number at you. Let's say hypothetically 10 feet of a surge, okay? Let's say you live at five feet elevation. You deduct the amount from your forecast, mm -hmm. okay? So 10 feet surge from sea level, okay. you deduct your elevation, five, you would have a five foot water level rise at where you live at your elevation. That's how, that's how you make that deduction. Good information right there, yeah, definitely. I, um, the, this hurricane, we, we've kind of seen this path before, haven't we, about five years ago? It's, it's pretty similar. That's right. So, well, with Irma, with Irma, we got lucky. At the last minute, it made that shift 20 to 30, even 40 miles to the east. Now, we were blessed in mm -hmm. the fact that that greatest surge went away from some of our most populated areas. Marco Island, Fort Myers Beach, Sanibel. I cannot stress enough how lucky we got during Irma. Now, that was not the case for everybody. Everglades City, Plantation Island, mm -hmm. they got the surge five to nine feet that we could have had in our more populated areas. Uh, the problem is this is a different animal now. This is a different angle of approach, and we don't have the luxury of having that breathing room that we had with with Irma. Sure. Yeah, and we also mentioned today, the big story here is evacuations. A lot of evacuations have been happening and we have been, you know, showing Alligator Alley, all that traffic mm -hmm. happening as it is 933 right now here on this Tuesday uh, is when is the last moment where you have to say, I need to stay here and hunker down now now because what's going to happen is um, the eye and eye wall. And I'll tell you what, if we could, Let's punch up, I'm gonna be, let's punch up weather too, because I wanna show you, I wanna show you not only the size of Ian, and in reference to Charlie as well as Irma, Ian is growing. Charlie was a very small storm. And then in reference to Irma, Irma was absolutely massive, huge storm. 
But Ian is growing, and its impacts are going to be felt here in southwest Florida, the main bulk of it, shortly. And as we will see the bands of rain and wind as they move in. So I wanted to go through, hour by hour, what we can expect and when the rain moves in. So I'm going to load that into my system here. And to answer your question, the reason why it has to be now where you need to make a decision, because as we go into time, watch what happens. So this is about midnight. Let's play this through. You know, Russ, Nicole, look by 7 a.m. Right, yeah. There's the eye, mm -hmm. the eye wall. So it's just off the coastline of Marco Island and Goodland. So if you're going to make a decision on do you stay or do you go, I mean, to be honest with you, that time is, I think, really past. But if you have to make a last-minute decision, you've got to do it now. You got, I would say from now to midnight, you've got to make a call. You either have to hunker down where you are or pack up, get the family, get the pets, and then go to a safe location. I also wanted to note really quickly, mm -hmm. uh, we are – uh, live streaming right now on Facebook Live on our Wink News Facebook page. So if you're watching right now on TV or on Facebook and you have a question for a meteorologist who are sitting right here, go and ask right now. We're going to try to get an answer for you. They're sitting right yeah. here to answer. Hey, yeah. we're, we're here for you. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's the big thing with these events. Um, we're here for you guys. We are here for the community. And whatever questions you've got, we are more than happy to help you out. And we're going to be with you the before, the during, the after. We're not going anywhere. We got beds set upstairs. We got food <laughs> left and right. We are going to be with you. And I think that's the one thing that um, sometimes gets forgotten is that, you know, just because we're in the studio, we are in the path of this storm too. And our family is in the path of this too. My wife at Babcock Ranch. I'm going to be in the Weather Center, of course, thinking about her and, and knowing that she is well cared for and well protected. My family came in. And so the message here is that we're all in this together as a community, whether we're in the studio or you guys are watching us at home. We are not immune from Ian. No, no, we no. We are no, going yeah, to get absolutely. hit by the storm as well. Yeah. But for any questions that you have, let us know and we, we are happy to answer. We did have you. one question though from yeah. one of our uh, uh, production crew out here. So the, again, those evacuation zones, uh, if you do, if you are now in place here in Southwest Florida and you live in a mobile home, for example, mm -hmm. what is your advice to them? Where should they go once the storm hits tomorrow? Uh, well, with a mobile home and, and in particular manufactured homes, especially if the eye wall is going to be heading towards you, those are literally tornado like winds. Mm -hmm. You need to evacuate. Go to, you know, if, if for a last means here, go to a shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, Hertz Arena mm -hmm. is an opportunity. Obviously, one of the biggest capacity areas of, of holding people in our general vicinity. So that's what I would recommend. Um, if you are in Lee, or Charlotte County, and you're in a manufactured home, and especially if you're in a storm surge zone area, uh, you need to pack it up if you haven't already done so. Um, tomorrow, as you've been saying, the event is really a tomorrow event. And let's hear from both of you about what you think is going to happen tomorrow. Juliana, let's start with you. Early in the morning, what, what do you expect when people wake up in the morning? I think we're definitely going to see that, like we're hearing now here in the studio, the rain's picking up. The wind is picking up. That's what we're going to start to see early on. We're going to continue to see those gloomy conditions. I um, mean, it's just going to continue that deteriorating pattern that we're already starting to see um, and feeling that a little bit more and maybe the nerves picking up for some people at home. Mm -hmm. um, but again, when you're staying with us and we're keeping you up to date, um, we're going to keep you on top of exactly right. what's going on. Um, but again, I, I think that's what I'm, I'm anticipating. And then again, into the early afternoon, I'd say late morning, early afternoon, starting to see that wind shift um, in the overnight into the late morning where we'll start to see that storm surge start to pick up where we're seeing the reverse storm surge right now, seeing that shift and uh, switch over. And, and Matt, everybody talks about landfall, but almost all Southwest Florida is going to be involved in this, right? Yeah, to a certain degree. I mean, I think it's a case of we all get hit, but who gets hit harder mm -hmm. than the other? And the answer to that question is where the eye wall pushes on shore. Um, I just got some recent models that were in the consensus models and they continue to shift it down the coast. Okay. Uh, and in fact, if we could real quick, I'll go into the weather center. Let's punch up weather two. And that way, instead of just telling you the models, let me show you that. So this is the previous future track model. 
that goes into time. And then as we advance this, you'll see where the Wink model wants to put it. And it puts the general vicinity of that eye, making landfall around Lee in Charlotte counties. Now, as we know, this is just one of many possibilities. But now I want to show you the what we call the consensus models. These are oftentimes some of the more accurate. And this is what they had yesterday. And then this is what just came in about an hour ago. And you'll see it shift now towards Charlotte and Lee counties. So what I expect from this is that the National Hurricane Center, they oftentimes will largely base their forecasts off of these models. I don't blame them. There's high accuracy. And that is why you will see a shift very likely with the cone. We have a brand new tornado warning that has been issued. Juliana, I know you're looking at it along uh, with myself in northeastern Lee County. Yeah, this is just north. It seems like this is still that persistent cell that we've been keeping an eye on for at least a couple of hours now. Uh, so Alva is in this, but the cell is to the west of Alva. This is tracking north northwest. Let me confirm that with the National Weather Services warning here. So this is capable. This is radar indicated. This is not necessarily a tornado that's confirmed to be on the ground. This is moving northwest at 10 miles per hour, so slowed down a little bit. I'm going to put this into motion here for you just to give you an idea. It's almost compressing on itself. If you can see that where this whole band is moving and has consistently been moving at 20 miles per hour or so to the northwest, that one part of the cell that notch there starting to kind of compress and, and catch up to itself. So I'm going to pause this and put some velocity on here for you. So yes, seeing that that clash there of reds and greens, rather not necessarily bright signatures, so not a very intense signature, but you can see some of that pocket, that pocket of data that's not necessarily showing up. So I'm going to switch over to Let's do Tampa's radar and I'm going to turn off wink. And again, you can see there uh, that pretty, you, I want to say clear area of rotation, some of those lighter dusty reds and then that bright, bright green. So I'm going to put a query on this. This is currently, it is showing over Alva, but this cell again is tracking to the north and west. So those winds aloft 32 miles per hour, keep in mind, in the upper, more so mid levels of the atmosphere, a little above the ground, necessarily seeing these winds at the ground. It looks like we just got a refresh there. Now seeing, uh, again, a better looking area of rotation, 12 miles per hour. Keep in mind, so green showing winds going towards the radar, red showing winds going away from the radar. So that's where you're seeing that spin visibly on the velocity signature there. So I'll also put so now, again, keep in mind this signature is looking better than what we had previously seen. Pretty still a muddled look at the correlation coefficient, which is essentially a debris tracker, um, a, a, at least where we're seeing that rotation here just to the northwest of Alva. Uh, seeing some debris to some capacity, but not necessarily a, a concentrated area of a debris signature here. Maybe, maybe showing up a little bit better now. Um, but I'm going to go back here to reflectivity to give you a better look at this cell. So where that rotation is showing, the reflectivity now is backing off um, and still tracking to more so towards Fort Myers Shores. And I'm going to put a storm track on this just to get a look here. So again, still moving. Let me see here. Rather 10 miles per hour is what the weather service had seen with this. And I'm going to put this here to the northwest. So fortunately, beach area here uh, at 956 can expect to see this cell push through 1001 for Olga. And uh, I'm going to send it over to Matt to get a better look at this. Yeah, very, very well said. And um, like you had noted, uh, the different radars have different takes on what's going to happen. And the uh, troublemaker right now is essentially southwest of Alva, right along 80. All right, so it's going to be working its way towards River Hall. It is just south of the Caloosahatchee, but it's a fast mover, about 25 to 30 miles an hour. Now let's switch over to Wink Live Doppler 3X, and it is showing not much in the way of significant rotation. We've got some, but nothing too terribly tight, and it would be generally now 
I would say uh, approaching River Hall. Let me throw on an icon so you can kind of get a good look as to where it would be. And now some of that rotation is working its way into River Hall. It will be eventually crossing over 80, but then who's impacted by it down the road potentially? Well, let's throw in that storm cone. And Juliana, the forward motion, according to the report, was uh, northwest. Yes, northwest at 10 miles per hour. Okay, so it's heading to the northwest at 10 miles an hour. That is particularly slow. The warning. Oh, they just canceled the it, warning? Yeah, it actually just showed up that it canceled. Okay, so there so. we go. There we go. So uh, I do know that we do have a few other tornado warnings in effect. So tell you what, what we will do is head down to the ones right now across sections of Collier County. And these are largely rural. Okay, it looks like they have actually even expired another tornado warning. But notice how uh, it's not just us seeing these warnings. We also have some near West Palm Beach. This one is going to be largely rural and over the Everglades and Big Cypress. However, I am going to be watching this as it heads closer and closer to populated areas in Collier County. But again, to reiterate, this particular warning is for 29. Big Cypress National Preserve. It's heading northwest at 35 miles an hour, and this will be until 10 o'clock. So why don't we take this opportunity, guys, to go back to the four shot, and we will answer some of the questions from our viewers. Does that sound good? That sound good? Because uh, this one right now, nothing confirmed on the ground, and it is largely in a spot that is not impacting any people. So we'll go big picture with Ian, show the rotation, as well as the eye and the eye wall, which now, in reference to Southwest Florida, let's do the core, it's now about 122 miles away from Goodland and Marco Island as a reference point. And then for our next reference point for Sanibel, I would say the core of it, about 135 miles away. So I'm gonna work my way back to the desk here. Here's a loop as to Ian as it makes the motion to the north and northeast at 10 miles an hour. But these quick spin-ups, the quick tornado warnings, uh, more than likely they will continue for the next uh, 12 to at least 18 hours. These tropical areas, the rotation, they're quick, they're brief, seconds and minutes, but I can't stress this enough. Before you head to bed, or at least try to head to bed, um, make sure that you have a notification system on your phone. You can download the uh, Free Wink Weather app and you get those uh, notifications immediately. All right, so one of the questions, someone says, in storm surge again, mm -hmm. say you're at 14 feet of elevation, you have six feet of, of a storm surge, is that person okay? That person is okay. Okay, yeah. uh, someone says they're on a third floor apartment, do you think that they're okay? Or anyone in a high rise for that matter with their well, storm surge and whatnot? That's a blessing and a curse all at the same time. Mm -hmm. You're on a third floor of the apartment, yes, you are higher mm -hmm. and doing better in the surge, Department, but with the wind, mm -hmm. the higher that you get up, it's just like with the tornado. You want to get to the lowest level. So what I would say in a situation like that is, and I've been asked this question quite a bit mm -hmm. during hurricane talks, is that you play the hypothetical. You have some contingency plans. And uh, in a case like this, you make some friends with the person that's downstairs. And I would say initially start on the first floor mm -hmm. and then if you are in a situation where there's rising water which shouldn't be because if you are in a storm surge threat zone you should have evacuated but if not mm -hmm. if there's rising water then you go you up to up. you go up yep we also had a couple the majority of the questions it seems like is about the storm surge let's talk about cape coral uh southwest Florida's largest city how far could we see storm surge going through the canals in cape coral I mean, it could go several miles inland. Um, it also depends on the general track. You know, if it continues to trend south, I don't think it's going to be to the point where Cape Coral is immune from the surge. But we could very well have it go upwards of three, four, five miles inland, um, especially on the south side of the Cape and the uh, both west and east side as well. We have the, the zones as well as the inundation maps. And uh, if we could real quick, we'll punch up weather two. I want to answer this question by showing you the map. And uh, there's obviously a look at Ian. You can see the rotation around the storm. But what I'm going to do at this moment, I am going to punch up. 
All right. If you're hearing that sound, that is because of a tornado warning that has just been issued, and the National Weather Service has extended that. So I tell you what, what we're going to do is we will go back to the questioning here in a bit, guys. Let's, ish, let's uh, take a look at the tornado warning that you may have just got the notification on your phone. It's a fast-moving little cell that will be capable of putting down a tornado at any moment. So right now I'm back at the touchscreen, and let's take a look here. All right, so next up is going to be, this was the area that we've been watching for a while. Uh, thankfully, we have the luxury of it having, uh, of have it being close to Wink Live Doppler 3X. Our radar is at Babcock Ranch, and you notice how down 31, this is the suspect area, and at the moment, I am really not seeing much. Wonderful news, wonderful. Now, the difference is the National Weather Service in Tampa, because they're over 100 miles away, they are seeing the rotation higher up. So here's what they see. Let me show you. See that little pocket right there? That's the one near River Hall. So in Tampa, that's what they see. They see this conflict of red next to green. That is where rotation is right now being indicated up in the atmosphere, the mid-levels. But thankfully, we have a brand new radar, which is only about seven miles away from this. Let me show you the difference. And this radar isn't showing it down near the ground. Wonderful, awesome. So we have yes in the clouds, but this is very telling that it hasn't come close to the surface. So with that being said, we're gonna be watching the trend, Juliana, but this is certainly wonderful that we don't have an incredibly tight area of rotation. Now, I still wanna do a storm cone on it. Right now, the area of concern with the tornado warning is right now as we take a street level, let me go even more, it's right here. So it's right near Riverdale High School and Buckingham Road. You got 80. Eventually, it's going to be working its way towards Fort Myer Shores. The general motion with this one is still to the west-northwest at about 20 miles an hour. So, Juliana, they've doubled the speed. Now, instead of 10, it is at 20. This will be in effect until about 10, 15. 51,000 people are under the tornado warning as it will be heading. Let's do a storm cone on it, and on a I believe I still have 20 miles an hour set. I do. So let me show you who's going to be in the path of this one. Eventually, it's going to be nor uh, North Fort Myers. So Orange Harbor, you guys are up next, followed by Bayshore Elementary. So Bayshore Elementary, 1012, and then the River Bend Community. So this one is going to primarily stay after it crosses over 80. It's going to stay north of 80. It will be crossing over the interstate as we go throughout the next 20 to 30 minutes. So again, here is the area of rotation, possible tornado. According to Wink Live Doppler 3X, I'm not seeing it. I am not seeing anything that would be suspect of a uh, tornado. And, and you can literally see this at home. If we had this bright green smack dab into that bright red, we would have tight rotation. I don't have it. So that at least is making me feel a lot better with the tornado warning that is right now in effect. But let's still take it seriously if you live within the warning, and let's show you where that is. Let's seek shelter. Lowest room, excuse me, a lowest floor away from windows, go to the interior, bathroom, closet, just get away from windows. We do that because of flying projectiles that are going through the air. So interior, try to insulate yourself with as many walls between you as well as the uh, exterior. Fort Myers Shores, Buckingham, Tice, North Fort Myers, and even towards downtown Fort Myers, technically under the warning. But what I want to do right now, let's do a time lapse. And you can generally see at home that this should largely avoid downtown Fort Myers and us here at Wink. North Fort Myers, you guys would be more susceptible to this area. So downtown Fort Myers, if this trend continues, and I'm going to stop this and do a general line, okay, it's, it's generally heading in this direction. 
Okay, so North Fort Myers, this line right here, that is where the area of rotation is going to be working its way towards. But I would still monitor the progress in downtown Fort Myers. If it shifts south or curls south, we'll let you know. But this will generally head in a due west or west-northwest fashion. Still not seeing much. And here's the radar. We're getting literally one of the best looks at it. The radar is just up the road at Babcock Ranch. And if we were to have anything that was showing rotation, it would right now be around Olga and Fort Myer Shores. Olga, Fort Myer Shores with the outer bands associated with Ian. Okay, Juliana, any more updates from the National Weather Service in Tampa Bay? And oftentimes, I'm folks, what happens is you get rotation, it weakens, it strengthens back, it cycles. And right now we are seeing one of the cycles. But at this point, I am just not seeing anything that's too alarming. It's a wonderful trend. Let's keep it going. Let's, uh, let's uh, open up Juliana's mic. Yeah, it just says a minute ago that they canceled a tornado warning for Charlotte and Lee County. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't think we were able to get her mic. Um, just a, a minute ago that they canceled that warning for Charlotte and Lee County. But it looks like there's a brand new warning now down in Collier. This is out towards Alligator Alley, um, just north of Tamiami Trail. This oh, is okay, and it looks like, okay, it looks like we are getting, uh, I do have an update. The tornado warning was canceled. Okay, tornado yes. warning was canceled. And then now we just got a new update on Ian as of the 10 o'clock advisory. So with that warning now expired, let's take a look at the new update from the National Hurricane Center and the status on Ian, the brand new cone, or excuse me, the brand new update that just came in. The brand new cone will be released at about 11 o'clock, so one hour from now, and no significant changes. They have it as a 120, pressure at 947 millibars, pushing to the north-northeast at about 10 miles an hour. Now, here is the old cone as of about 5 o'clock. I would not be surprised if they continue to shift this to the east, based off of the models shifting east as well. If you missed this about 20 minutes ago, the reason why I say that, I want to show you the trend with the consensus models. These are oftentimes one of the more accurate. And here's what they had previously. So this was 24 hours ago. Now as I put this into time, look at how it continues to ship down the coast and wanting to put it a potential landfall anywhere from Sanibel and extending towards Venice. So Sanibel to Venice. So I have a feeling that the National Hurricane Center will be shifting their cone more east. But at this point, we are going to see the worst part of this storm as we hit tomorrow during primarily the Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening time frame. But in Collier County, you will be starting as early as the morning hours. Just depends on, obviously, our uh, coastline. Some of the uh, expectations. We will start in Charlotte County, but I will be adjusting these as we go throughout time based off of the uh, track. If the track continues to move south, i got to bring up the numbers. But in Charlotte County, about 4 to 9 inches, few spots 10 inches plus. Winds gusting 85 to 125 miles an hour or greater will be possible with about 8 to 12 feet of surge. Let's take you into Lee County. And same deal, if Ian works his way down the coastline, see that value of 70 to 105? That could very well match the one in Charlotte County, which is between 85 to 125 miles an hour, because every mile makes all the difference when it comes to a landfalling hurricane. And right now, the bulk of it with the track is up the coast, but if it goes more south, I will be adjusting these values up with greater wind. For our viewers in Collier County, some of the expectations. The rainfall, two to five, if not three to five, isolated five and six inches and greater. Your winds, 50 to 85, but same deal. If this trends more south, we gotta bring up the values. These are still preliminary with your surge of about five to eight, even nine feet is gonna be possible. Into DeSoto County, Highlands County, let's take a look at you guys, four to eight inches, few spots eight inches plus, the wind gust potential, think of it this way, 70 here, 100 there. There's your range, 
from west to east, hurricane force wind gusts are going to be possible. With uh, our next update, into Glades and Hendry County, three to five inches of rain, gusts 50 to 80 miles an hour, and isolated tornadoes, as we have seen, certainly possible. And then I also want to highlight Sarasota County. Sarasota County is the last one on the list. Uh, last but certainly not least, you will see a significant impact. And let's now throw in Sarasota County as what I'm expecting for you, 6 to 12 inches, a few spots over a foot, winds gusting 85 to 125 miles an hour or greater, isolated tornadoes possible, and the surge levels that wind-driven force of about 8 to 12 feet. And the reason why we are in the situation that we are is because we are in what's called the right front quadrant. That is the worst part of the storm, and that is what's going to be pushing on shore with the strongest wind, the highest surge, and the greatest tornado potential. I do want to show you the timing of the surge. Right now, we are not seeing it, and I don't expect it for the remainder of the evening. And if anything, you look outside, you might see your tide levels lower than normal all the way into tomorrow morning early. But then what happens is with our storm surge forecast, you will start to see it go up gradually throughout the morning and then eventually hitting high levels during the afternoon and evening hours. So that is the very latest on my end with the storm. We will continue to get you these updates. Now I'm going to toss it out to Chris as well as Lois. All right, Matt, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so we are at the 10 o'clock hour and we know we have some updates coming in from the Hurricane Center, but we also have that major cone update coming up in just one hour. And so we want it. We're hearing a lot of rain overhead. We know you are too all over Southwest Florida. So we'll have the meteorologists right nearby so that we can bring you the very latest on the weather. We'll be checking in too with everybody that we can. We have crews stationed all around Southwest Florida, mostly to watch what's going on um, and obviously we're keeping them very safe and we'll hear from all of them in the daylight but we have a few of them that are up late kind of keeping track of conditions. Yeah that's right let's go out to Sanibel Island one of the areas that is under an evacuation order Celine MacArthur has been there all day. Celine are you seeing this heavy rain as well? Um, we are. In fact, there was so much rain and so much wind. We came over here to the Marriott so we can get dry for just a few minutes. But if for anybody at home who hasn't been watching, in the last hour I reported that fire and EMS on Sanibel Island are leaving the island at 10 p.m. They say that the roads, the weather is getting worse, the roads are impassable, so they're not going to be able to safely get to you or get to you at all. So again, they are leaving and they are asking you to follow suit, to get off the island and get to safer and higher ground. Take a listen. I would tell them to heed the warnings and if they're being told to leave and enter a man uh, mandatory evacuation zone, then definitely go ahead and evacuate. You don't want to be in that situation where the winds are too high for us to come out and get you anymore and you just don't want to put yourself in a bad situation unnecessarily. Sanibel firefighters tell me they are very grateful. All, so many people evacuated. They left the island and that's good news. Some of them actually came here to the Marriott, which is on the Fort Myers side of the causeway. So they are here. In fact, the people at the front desk tell me that this place is fully booked. For now, we're live in Fort Myers. I'm Celine MacArthur, Wink News. All right, Celine, thank you. And glad to hear that people were getting off the island there. And she's safely on the other side of the causeway as well. Yeah, what you're looking at right here is Immokalee Road at 75. You can see there's some heavy rain in that area as well. There's still some traffic on the highways. Uh, remember that in areas around southwest Florida, Lee County, and other emergency crews, just like you heard from Sanibel, they're asking you now, it is time to be into your safe location mm -hmm. and to stay there. So if you are expecting to travel yet tonight, please get it done because authorities would like you in your safe location before any of these other tornadoes pop up or any other emergencies occur. They want you hunkered down. Yeah, very important. Lee County has specifically asked, first they asked for eight o'clock and, and then they're asking everybody, you know, by nine o'clock to send it again, please be where you need to be. And every other county, I'm sure the emergency operations people, if they haven't set a specific time, would agree. They don't want everybody out on these 
a gusty, rainy roads tonight, mm -hmm. and we're it's all, we're going into it, so it's going to get worse from here. So uh, hopefully, a good sign that the traffic is very light. Yeah. So we're trying to monitor other crews out there right now. Uh, we're going to go to Zach Oliveri right now, who has been out all day. You are now in the EOC. Is that correct, Zach? That's right, Lois. We are hunkered down in the EOC. We we're setting up our cots earlier. We're speaking to public information officers, trying to get as much detail as we can. The latest conversation I had was with the public information officer for Charlotte County Fire and EMS, Todd Dunn. He continued to stress to people that they need to stay safe, keep this the seriousness of the storm in mind. And the last question I asked him during our conversation was, what's been going through the mind of people inside that room, those who are trying to make sure that everyone in the county is safe and heeding those warnings? And this is what he responded with. It's probably different for everyone, you know. I just think, you know, my, you know. Dang it, man. <laughs> you know, my family's home. So, you know, you hope, you know, they're going to be okay while we're here, you know, helping make sure everybody's okay. So, I mean, you know, everybody's probably, you know, got different emotions. Like, you know, I'm thinking of my family. I think of my job to, you know, make sure that everybody's got the message. So, you know, it's tough. And he's not alone. I'm sure a lot of people in this building are thinking about their family and friends and loved ones who are out there in Charlotte County and throughout Southwest Florida. Everyone's just hoping that we could get through this storm okay. And as I said earlier, the last time I was on, can, if you are in Charlotte County, they are encouraging you for the next 24 hours, stay inside, don't go outside to see what this storm is, because the most important thing in this whole thing is your safety. Live in Charlotte County, Zach Oliveri, Wink News. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Zach. They take their job seriously. They're hoping you take the warning seriously because this is what they do for a living. They want you to be safe in an emergency. You understand their emotion and we thank them for the time and effort that they put into keeping us safe. Uh, you know, so many people are having those same emotions right now about their, their families and their property being separated, but especially for the folks there because a lot of those folks went through Hurricane Charlie 18 yeah, years ago and rebuilt right. from Hurricane Charlie. and. Those memories are still fresh. I mean, you and I were here 18 years ago yes. for Charlie, and mm -hmm. it, it just seems like yesterday when the, the talk of a possibility of another storm coming at or near Charlotte Harbor comes up, it's like, oh, oh God, again. Yeah, please no. Yeah. A warning for those who are not evacuating their homes for Ian. A Astero fire says there will be a point when during that emergency, when emergency personnel will not be able to respond, when winds reach 45 miles per hour. A prioritization list will be made for those who call 911 during this time and assistance then will be provided as soon it is, as it is safe to do so. Some places have already put out the notice that they're yes. not responding at this point. Yeah. Just into us too, Cuba is without electricity after Ian collapsed that country's power grid. Cuba's electric union says in a statement that the work is being done gradually to restore service to the country's 11 million people there. Yeah. We want to show you live pictures right now from Fort Myers Beach. There you see the pier side grill cam right by the pier. Um, you see some of the raindrops flying past the uh, camera there, and you see it is wet there right now. Rain really coming down. That is an area that is under an evacuation. Not everyone has left, but a lot of people have left. They are expecting quite significant surge on Fort Myers Beach. You're watching Wink News. Continuing coverage of Hurricane Ian. We'll be right back. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Wink is closely tracking this developing situation. Only Wink has live Doppler 3X, three times more powerful than any radar in Southwest Florida. Keeping you up to the minute when every minute matters. Wink News, the weather authority. Injured? Call Wilbur Smith Law, serving Southwest Florida for 50 years. When you think Miami, lots of things come to mind. But when you think Homestead Miami, it's everything. 
The vibrancy of South Beach and the calm of the Keys. It's where you get a weekend of a million thrills, leading to one of the final chances to make it to the championship four. It's everything we all think of when we think Miami, but so much more. I love this damn racetrack. Get your tickets now at homesteadmiamispeedway.com. When a storm comes through, I talk to my son and my daughter and I say, listen, dad's going to be away. And they understand that. They understand dad's going to, to help other people. What are we trying to do for the people is give them a lot of hope. They're seeing their neighborhoods coming on. We're not done until everybody's power is restored. For my younger daughter, you know, it's, it's tough. I hope that she goes back one day and says, you know what? Dad did what he could for the community and this made a difference. When people need our help, we answer the call. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but Basic. Get 1.9% financing for 36 months on 10 models, like Rogue, with best in class fuel economy. Get 0% interest for 12 months this week at Recreational Warehouse. Full-featured hot tubs from just $19.95 in Fort Myers, Naples, and Port Charlotte. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. We're going to take you to Key West because they have a lot of flooding in the Keys right now. Key West, this is the southernmost point. You see there the camera is glitchy, but you can see the water around that buoy that is normally just concrete. Or, uh, and there's been a lot of water there flowing into the streets, a lot of flooding in that area, um, a lot of surge, a lot of heavy rain. And that is something that's kind of coming our way now. So we have to be very concerned. Yep. And as we wait for it, we have crews that are kind of embedded at emergency operations centers in a couple mm -hmm. of different places. Mm -hmm. Peter Fleischer is in Sarasota County. It was just earlier this morning that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis stopped by to speak at this facility, the Sarasota County Emergency Operations Center. He urged Floridians all along the west coast of the state to please evacuate your area. If you might be in danger, if you might live in a flood zone, it's not worth taking the chance. Now, we did observe people in homes and businesses here in Sarasota County heeding that advice, evacuating filling up their tanks with gas, boarding up homes and businesses before they left the area. But officials in Sarasota County have been alarmed at how few people they have reporting to emergency shelters. They are urging citizens, even if you don't think that you're in immediate danger, these shelters are going to be more safe than a home. Now, if you're in an RV park or you're in a mobile home, those homes are not built to withstand the types of winds and rains and storm surges that Hurricane Ian might provide. And officials had a very grave warning for people in those communities. Those homes are not designed to handle a hurricane. So those are the folks really I'm talking to is the people that live in mobile homes right now and the people that live along the water in any of these A areas even if you're in a high rise and you think you're going to be fine because you're on the eighth floor, remember, you're going to lose power. You're going to be surrounded by water. Sarasota County officials urge residents it's not too late to act if you can get out of the area tonight. They predict that wind and storm conditions will probably make roads impossible to navigate around 2, 3, or 4 o'clock on Wednesday morning. So if you have the opportunity and you're thinking about evacuating, do so. It's better to be safe than sorry. Reporting in Sarasota County, Peter Fleischer, WIC News. All right, Peter, thank you. One thing that's important to remember as you listen to them, too, they have a little more time up north in Sarasota to yeah. have that window. If you're watching in Collier County, that's probably not a, a good idea no. or a good time frame. It's probably over. Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, another thing people are very concerned about is their power loss in a hurricane. Mm -hmm. And very logical because we are, have a Category 3, potentially a Category 4. There is going to be power loss. Wink News anchor Rachel Cox Rosen joins us in the studio. Rachel, are we seeing any power outages right now? Lois, I've been monitoring both FPL and LCEC all evening, and this is what it looks like on FPL's website right now, not what it normally looks like. You see this kind of gray blackish area over the map? That is because of Ian. This says we're responding to Ian and are unable to provide a restoration estimate at this time. That means they can't tell you if they are seeing outages. I will tell you earlier in the evening, just about, you know, 30 to 45 minutes ago, I was seeing very low numbers kind of in that multiple range that they have here because they have a little uh, key here that says 
how many outages they're seeing. And I was only seeing, you know, a single digits to double digits, nothing crazy. LCEC, their map is up and running. The most outages, no surprise I'm seeing, is kind of in that Cape Coral area, Bokelia, Pine Island. Over here, we see 37. That is in the 33990 zip code. That is the most I'm seeing right now because these colors correspond to the number there. And the green is the most I'm seeing. Those are double digits. A couple out in the Lehigh Acres area, a little bit here in the Bonita Springs, Golden Gate Estates area as well, but nothing significant at this time. And we do have this video from somebody up in Perry, Georgia. This is showing I-75 going southbound. These are power companies coming down to Florida, getting ready to respond. We also have a really great photo. This is the Collier County Fairground showing all of those vehicles ready to respond to any outages down in Collier County. Back to you guys. We like to see all those people coming to help. We like to see all those mm -hmm. trucks parked because, okay, if this is your first hurricane, mm -hmm. your power is going to go out almost for yeah. sure. Yeah. So a couple days, three days, depending on where you are, maybe a couple weeks. You know, they kind of triage it from hospitals to police mm -hmm. stations to major metro areas to down to streets and neighborhoods. And it, it can take a while. I mean, Charlie, well, I, I don't think I've ever been back in less than seven days. Well, we do it so much better now than yeah. we used to do it. They stage those crews all over so they can respond so much more quickly. Once the storm threat clears, it does work a lot better than it used to. Yeah, and we, there's, a, there's a lot of people. The technology, too, the technology you see behind us allows mm -hmm. them to pinpoint a safe place to be better mm -hmm. when they can advance into an area better and it's the moment that it's clear so that they can really do something plus your bill you're helping to harden harden the uh, infrastructure right. of those power poles and all those different things so you're helping to make the power get restored a lot faster yeah so we'll be watching that as we get closer through tomorrow because it'll certainly th those numbers will go up mm -hmm. let's take this view from above here this is what hurricane ian looked like uh from way up above, about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Look at the blue flashes on the right side of the screen there of Ian. That indicates lightning. Now, that's a um, few hours old now, that image, but it's still pretty massive. Let's go. Pizza became a main staple <laughs> ahead of Hurricane Ian across the area. And across our newsroom. Mm -hmm. Domino's is being slammed with orders tonight. Week News reporter Asha Patel talked to the manager about how they're meeting the demand. Employees here at this Domino's on Cleveland Avenue tell me that their phone has not stopped ringing all day. If you take a look at this Domino's tracker, orders should keep on coming in every minute. I spoke to the store manager for Domino's who tells me today they have been receiving orders from people wanting 5 to 30 pizzas, but they are ready for it with enough staff and ingredients. However, it's a different case at Little Caesars on Fowler where windows and doors are boarded shut, not allowing anyone in because of Hurricane Ian. The store manager for Domino's says they haven't been this busy in a long time, both in store and with deliveries team is uh, helping us so we can help out the whole community, make sure everybody gets their food. If it gets uh, really rough out there, we will be calling them back, you know, just for their safety. Those are orders. All that sound is orders. The store manager tells me that they're closing their doors tonight at 10, and they will also be closed all day tomorrow. In Fort Myers, Asha Patel, we can use. Okay, thanks again. Uh, we want to break in here real quick to get you a tornado warning for two particular spots. And this is going to be for Collier County, one being fairly uh, significant as it has been tightening up. So next up, Ave Maria. And it's going to be for an area of rotation right now passing by Sunnyland. So here's what it looks like on radar. I put a little time lapse on it and it's, as it's generally heading to the northwest. And there it is and it's going to be generally working its way into Ave Maria. Here is the uh, troublemaker cell, and let me show you the velocity, essentially what I'm looking at, and it's right here. So right here is where we have the area of, ro uh, of rotation. It is pushing northwest towards Ave Maria, and because of that direction, if you're listening to me in Ave Maria, now is the time to seek shelter in the interior of your home. I know we're all seeking shelter, but head to the interior, closet, bathroom, put as many walls in front of you and the exterior of your home as possible. Let's analyze some of the wind speeds on Wink Live Doppler 3X. 
And right now in the atmosphere, about 50, 60, almost approaching 70 miles an hour. And just for some double verification here, let's take a look at Tampa. And they are as well seeing this area of rotation. And we also have, in addition to that, this one is even more troubling. Uh, this one, and it's going to be right here. Thankfully, <laughs> big cypress, little to no people south of the interstate and this is essentially between this is around mar marker 49 this is mar marker 77 so i would say give or take that's in the mar marker in the 50s and 60s as is pushing northwest over interior collier county there's going to be the uh, classic hook the potential tornado would be located right here they will very likely extend that warning but here's the other one that is heading to ave maria if you got a notification on your phone, this is why. Let's do a storm cone. And that has certainly tightened up, uh, Juliana. You see those colors too? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so the rotation is getting stronger <clears throat> with this one very close to Ave Maria as well as Sunnyland. Let's take a look at the tornado debris tracker. If you're just tuning in and just joining us, what this is, the red is rain. If we have tree debris, home debris, you name it, that gets launched into the air, it will pop out as a different color. And there's our legend, there's our scale. It would be blue, green, and yellow at the moment. Granted, we got some messiness here, but I don't have anything too definitive, but that is being closely watched as we speak. I am gonna double up and see if Tampa has any type of debris, and they do not, okay? So that's a good trend, that's a good trend. That tells me that at the minute, we don't have something on the ground, but let me go back to giving everybody a storm cone. The general motion with this tornado warning, let me double check with Four. Miami. It's heading northwest at 30. So now let's do a storm cone on it for our friends in Ave Maria. Okay, I'm going to do uh, real quick. Got to put in 30 miles an hour. Okay, let's do an estimate. And that would put it, Ave Maria, about 1029, Arrowhead Reserve by around 1042, and then Lake Trafford Elementary School. Okay, so uh, for a reference here, you got Immokalee. So it'd be on the west side of Immokalee, Lake Trafford Elementary. But first up, Ave Maria. Time now is about 1021, so it'd be about seven to eight minutes from now. There is the area. You can almost see a little hook. That is the area with a potential tornado that could drop at any minute. It is certainly tightening up. Let's do a sampling of some of the colors as they are ranging anywhere from, I would say probably in the 50 to 70 mile an hour range. And uh, yeah, about 50, 60, wouldn't be surprised if we have some 70s there as well. So there is the area as we switch back over, it will be an Ave Maria in the next five to even 10 minutes. And then the other area that I'm watching is this one over Big Cypress, largely rural. So we will continue to get you those updates on the tornado warnings. Let's go and do a quick briefer on Ian. So Ian continues to spiral and churn off so offshore. This is a 45 minute time lapse. You can see that well-defined eye on the eye wall. And this, in comparison to Marco Island, let's do a, uh, Let's do a distance tracker. It's about 115 to 120 miles away. Let's see also now if it's deviating either west or east of the track from the National Hurricane Center. Okay, I'm gonna load this into the system and we can all kind of look together. And the yellow, okay, the yellow is the track in which it was from. And then the red is what the National Hurricane Center is forecasting. So what I want to do right now, let's just extrapolate. And if we continue this yellow line right here, if we continue that track and that yellow line up, and everybody's going to see this at home, that would put it, can everybody see that? If it continues on that general track, that would actually have landfall into Lee County if it continues on that general line. Now these storms can wobble. These storms can wobble, so keep that in mind. But if you take that general line, that would have the landfall more into Lee County 
instead of Charlotte and Sarasota County. Now, I would not be surprised at, let's say, 11 o'clock if they shift this line more east and closer to the white line, which is heading more towards Lee County. But that's just based off of the recent trend. You can see the yellow line, that is where the system has tracked. I'm going to put it right on top of it, okay? So you can see that I have the white line on top of where it tracked, and if you continue that line all the way up, that would put landfall in Lee County, potentially around Sanibel as well as Captiva. Sanibel Captiva, we need to be on landfall alert just in case. So don't be surprised. I, I've been saying all day, basically anywhere from Sarasota to Sanibel, but now it continues to trend more south, and there is the very real possibility that the landfall could be Sanibel as well as Captiva. You can see the general direction in that to the north and northeast. So again, this is just preliminary. It's just based off the trend. These storms can wobble, but in its current direction, it would be targeting uh, Sanibel as well as Captiva. Hey, Matt, they uh, extended that warning. The, um, the one over Big Cypress? Over Big Cypress. Okay, okay, I thought that they would. Okay, so let's do another check on the velocity. And the velocity is the wind. The wind of what we have in the atmosphere telling us that we have rotation and we have a potential tornado. And yeah, boy, one after another. You see that, Juliana? Almost like a train car. There's one, there's two, there's three. And because we have a contrast in colors, that is where some rotation is being indicated as it is now approaching Ave Maria. Let's do a scan as to where it is at the moment. And it's a bit of a, a, a messy display, but it would be around this general vicinity, Oil Well Road, okay? And approaching uh, Ave Maria Boulevard. Ave Maria, my memory serves me right, we've got about 30,000 people that live there, and this is a system that's gonna be working its way in. So hunker down, go to the center part of your home. The, let's see the history and how long it has had some of that rotation and you can literally, you see that at home? You can see the track. Now, the track of the one that was heading to Ave Maria as we speak, notice how it was stronger south of Alligator Alley. So the rotation is working its way northwest, but it just hasn't been as deep and as significant as, let's say, earlier. And then here's the other one. You'll notice brighter shadings of blue. Is, my, uh, is the desk in the way? There you go. You'll notice a brighter shading of light blue and dark blue, stronger rotation with that one. So that's one that we're going to be closely monitoring as it crosses over Alligator Alley. And if you are uh, listening to me on radio, simulcasting, this one, I always notice uh, this is mile marker in the 70s. This is around 50. The area of rotation is going to be crossing over about mile marker 55 to 65 and looks like the weather service just continued now a new tornado warning for that one which is now on top of the interstate and let's take a look at the velocity as to where it is yeah it's right on top of the interstate so juliana once you take a once you take a, a real vantage point of not only collier county but southwest florida as a whole with some of the showers and storms that are rotating around ian yeah so still continuing to see that those persistent bands across the area. And now, as we've been hearing here in the studio, feeling more of those heavier pockets of rain, these are looking rather disorganized, I'll say, uh, with these bands. But now they're very fast moving with this cell in particular uh, that we're paying close attention to in Collier. Not, the National Weather Service had indicated that this is moving northwest at 40 miles per hour. So that just goes to show just these bands in general, how they're essentially whipping around right now. Um, so you can see widespread rain. We'll get a closer look kind of county by county here. So DeSoto County seeing a bit more of that light rain that most of the area has been feeling similar here in Highlands, Lake Placid, seeing some of those uh, bands of some more moderate rain, I'd say. Charlotte County here, Punta Gorda, seeing quite a bit of heavy rain falling along I-75. Uh, so not too terrible, I'd say, for some of the drivers that are probably on I-75 right now, but uh, not 
ideal either. Pushing here into Lee County, you can see North Fort Myers, portions of North Fort Myers, seeing this significant band of heavier rain. Um, and these are all essentially moving northwest. If not, I'd expect these bands here with the way that you can see that curvature to be tracking uh, to more so due west. I'll put a little bit of a loop here in the last 15 minutes, just like that. Um, essentially, what's pushing out of North Fort Myers is tracking due west to the coastal areas. So Boquilia already seeing some of that moderate to heavier rain uh, will likely continue to see moderate to heavier rain. And I'll pause this here, continue to work our way around. So areas like Alva seeing more of that light rain, Lehigh Acres seeing very light rain, Gateway seeing some of these pockets and little cells of heavier rain, Cape Coral seeing bands uh, as well of moderate rain. So generally everybody is feeling this and we're going to continue to to hear the sound of the rain on our rooftop um, and see this for the rest of the evening. This isn't going to go away anytime soon. It's only going to continue, as we've been saying, deteriorate over the next several hours into tomorrow morning. And then bringing it back here to Hendry County, widespread light rain across the area. And then pushing into northern Collier County, areas like Immokalee, just northwest of Immokalee, seeing quite a bit of heavy rain. Fortunately, areas like Corkscrew Swamp not falling over what seems like two terribly populated areas. Um, but for right now, still just keeping an eye on some of these particular cells. And then, of course, these two, rather now one, active tornado warning um, in central Collier County and parts of southern Hendry County there um, that we're keeping a close eye on. And I'll send it back over to you, Matt. Okay, so I am getting word that let's go back to what and, and essentially how a hurricane develops. So we have an area of showers and storms that tightens up, strengthens and becomes a hurricane, and then it eventually develops an eye. But the eye is not always consistent. It goes through what we call eye wall replacements. When that happens, temporarily, the hurricane restructures itself and it doesn't strengthen. But then once it completes the eye wall replacement, it can sometimes get the green light to re-intensify. I've just gotten word that that has been happening and it just completed. So there could be even more strengthening as it pushes to the north and northeast. The pressure right now, let's bring this up, is at 947 millibars. That is the lowest pressure in September since Hurricane Irma in 2017. So the pressure's at 947 millibars. We are about 20 to 30 minutes away from A, a new update, and B, a new cone. My assumption is that based off of this, let me show you the consensus models if you're just tuning in. These consensus models are oftentimes the better performing and the, uh, they have a wonderful track record. That's why the National Hurricane Center uses and looks at them and base their forecasts off of them. And this was yesterday. Let me show you now what they just showed about an hour or two ago as they are shifting more to the east. So there's the very real possibility that Lee County could see the landfall in addition to Charlotte. And that would bring the eye and the eye wall, the worst part of the storm, that wind-driven force up the Caloosahatchee. That's our worst case scenario, which is now becoming a very real possibility. Not doing that to scare you. And trust me, that is not what we're in the business for. Our job is to inform you, to give you the possibilities here to prepare yourself as well as your family, but that is becoming more and more of a possibility with these models shifting east. I don't expect at the moment a shift so east that it avoids Marco Island and heads into Monroe County. That's becoming more and more unlikely because we're approaching the day and the time of landfall. Time now is about 1032. The landfall is about 18 hours from now. So as we're getting closer to the landfall, these extreme possibilities of a hard left turn or a hard right turn become less and less unlikely because the models are handling it now extremely well. It's not like what we had five days ago when there was literally a 400 mile range in possibilities. So right now the storm is at a category three. How we gauge these hurricanes is what we call the Saffir Simpson scale. Cat one, 74 to 95 miles an hour. And you know, cat one is not a walk in the park. Ask Puerto Rico when we had Fiona just a bit ago. That was a cat one, that brought some significant impacts. But the current forecasts 
with Ian is right about here on the upper end cusp of a category three and lower end four. Now, in about 20 to 30 minutes, we'll have to see if they revise their landfall forecast, if they go down or up. But right now they have us on the periphery of a cat three and four, which the damage oftentimes associated with that caliber of a storm is devastating to borderline catastrophic. Again, no hyperbole, not doing that to scare you, but in the past, with storms of that caliber, they produce that type of damage in the areas that see the eye wall. I want to show some observations, some of the wind speeds that are coming in, and the latest wind speeds, nothing I don't think we can handle. We're in good shape at the moment. The winds are breezy inland, windy along the coastline, right now sustained into the teens and 20s. Let's take a look at the wind gusts. And uh, yeah, they're basically, they're not registering because they're not high enough. Let's keep that going for as long as we can. But look at the wind direction. The wind coming in from the northeast, pushing southwest, driving the water out. I wanna show you a time-lapse image from earlier today along Fort Myers Beach. Look at these tides, my goodness. And we had a similar situation like this with Irma back in 2017, bringing the tides out. Now what's gonna happen is into tomorrow, and I just want us to be mentally prepared, we will have Ian making landfall at high tide. So I wanna take this opportunity to show you the local high tides and when you can expect them. And I can't stress this enough. So this graphic, the high tide. These are the high tide times, as well as the worst case scenario inundation in the various colors that you see. There's gonna be the legend. So this is set to make landfall between noon and six. To be more specific, current forecast has it around three to five. So look at the times of the high tides. Obviously that would be a worst case scenario. Anglewood's at 4. Gasparilla Sound, about 3.30. There's Charlotte Harbor at 6.04. And co it's, it coincides, unfortunately, with the landfall time. Boca Grande, about 3.46. Now let's take it down the coastline. Cape, 6.13. Fort Myers, right along the Caloosahatchee, about 7 o'clock. Matt Lachey, 5.40. Captiva, 2.38. Sanibel, 3.11. If you are still on Sanibel and Captiva, please leave now. Nothing later beyond midnight. This literally has the opportunity to flood most, if not all, of the island. Serious business here, especially considering that this could be making landfall more down the coast and towards the islands of Sanibel and Captiva. So please, if you haven't made arrangements already, make them and evacuate the islands of Sanibel and Captiva. And then for our final spot into Collier County, for Naples, about 245, and for Marco Island, 321, Everglades City, 335. Now, the next part of this, I want to go through hour by hour the future track model and how things are going to go from here on out. So what I've also noticed, so let's start tomorrow morning. When we wake up, I hope everybody gets some good sleep tonight. That way you feel better tomorrow morning because it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long and exhausting day. So here's going to be 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. You'll notice at that point, parallel roughly to Marco Island and Goodland. As we go into time, this is around midnight, or excuse me, not midnight, by lunchtime. By lunchtime, there's going to be the eye and the eye wall. Worst part of the storm, tornado-like winds. That would essentially be parallel to Bonita Springs and just southwest of Sanibel and Captiva. Then it starts to get real interesting after lunchtime and all the way as we approach sunset. Within that time, that's gonna be the landfall and that's gonna be the time of the greatest and the worst impacts. Tornado-like winds, potentially gusting in excess of 100 miles per hour plus. For those that are impacted by this, okay, that's what we're gonna be looking out for. Notice the circulation, our, our Wink computer model has it on Boca Grande, but as I had noted before, Sanibel is very much in the cards here. So Boca Grande to Sanibel, potential landfall. This is about five o'clock. 
as we would see the maximum impact. If you look very closely at your TV screen, the counterclockwise motion around Ian is going to force the water up. And then we will start to see a significant rise in our water levels as we gradually go throughout the morning, but it will go up very quickly. So I don't want anybody to be caught off guard. Gradually goes up in the morning, and we're talking from sunrise to lunchtime, and then it will be going up fairly quickly between lunchtime and then sunset, and it will continue into Wednesday night. Beyond that point, starting to, and if you notice these breaks, what Ian would be doing by that point is wrapping around drier air from its northwest, and that's why you don't have that completely symmetrical look. But there's the core of it around DeSoto County by around 11 o'clock with hurricane force wind gusts, Fort Myers, Naples, and then we still have a storm surge potential into Thursday, even despite the fact that the core of it starts to depart because of the wind, the force of the wind coming in from the water. Now I want to show you some of the rainfall projections from the American model. And they have been showing, you'll start to see some colors here shortly, maybe, we'll see. But the general area of greatest rainfall is primarily where we have, you can see the uh, pockets of generally three to seven inches, and then over 10 inches plus will be possible for parts of the area. Now let's talk wind. Let's go hour by hour with wind. Okay, so this is going to be tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Tropical storm force gusts. Notice the areas in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. Quick break real quick. Uh, Juliana, how are we doing on the tornado warnings? It looks like they continued the tornado warning for Collier and Hendry County. Thanks for noticing me uh, scurrying over here a little bit. Um, yeah, so it looks like this is active until 11 p.m. You can see that on your screen there. Let me point this out here. So this is central north central collier county the very southern uh, portion here of hendry county and let me get a look here at the cell itself and we'll put velocity on this just to get a look still the the persistent area of this band that we've been keeping an eye on the last little while here so as these cells it seems like in this particular area keep whipping through we're getting a little bit of that spin there in the atmosphere so you can see these brighter light blues and now some of those reds peeking in. So seeing a, a good signature here, good in the sense of it's, it's indicative of rotation, not necessarily a good sign that we like to see. Uh, I'll also put some correlation coefficient here just to get an idea of the debris signature. So the red showing rain, the cooler colors, the blues showing debris. And uh, where that rotation is, is not necessarily seeing too much of a debris signature in line with that. Um, so to me, that's looking like a good sign, not necessarily mm -hmm. seeing anything up messing yep. with the ground or close to the surface right now. Um, but this is the, uh, let me put a, give you an idea of the wind speeds at this level in the atmosphere, 58 miles per hour. And then those alternatives still a little bit slower, um, but these are up in the atmosphere uh, up, up at that angle a little bit. So not seeing that at the surface right now. Just want to make that clear. But you can see some, some of these pockets here. And like we had said before, a little bit of a, of a train with this area of rotation. Um, it, you can see here along State Road 29, an area of some pretty significant rotation, I would say. And then over here towards the corner where Collier meets Hendry, and then additionally here further south towards I-75, that's just switched over there to Miami's radar for you. Additional areas and pockets of some rotation. So definitely a persistent area of some tornado, rather radar indicated tornadoes that um, Tampa, Miami are picking up on at the National Weather Service offices yeah. there. So. Well, th hey, thank you so much for being, man. She, there's not a single thing that's going by her this evening. Thank you so much. <laughs> she, she's on top of anything that's spinning. And uh, here's something that's going to be spinning a little bit bigger than a tornado, and that is going to be Ian tomorrow. Let's revisit the wind field, and this is going to be the wind gust potential. Okay, so this is about lunchtime. And try to find where you live. And this is a sampling from the European model. So this is the European model. And as you can imagine, you get closer to the core, you get the potential for hurricane force wind gusts. And then let's stop this towards the eventual landfall. 
So this does throw in the possibility of winds gusting over 100 miles an hour for portions of Lee, Charlotte, DeSoto, and Sarasota County. Again, second half of tomorrow as it makes the eventual landfall. The one thing that I cannot stress enough here is that every storm is different. Sometimes what happens is, and I see this all the time on the internet, is where, um, you know, oh, I went through Irma, it was a piece of cake, no big deal. I had others without power for two to three weeks with Irma. Or with Charlie, yeah, I was fine with Charlie. Others had winds of over, other people had wind of over 140 miles an hour. Every storm is different. And for example, Charlie, the path of Ian is almost identical to Charlie, but look at the size. Ian is literally twice the size of Charlie, meaning the influence and the scope of Ian is twice as big. Now, when it comes to storm surge, the slower a storm goes, as well as the bigger the storm is, the greater surge. And that's why we have the storm surge projections that we do. Irma was an absolute monster. At one point, uh, Irma, the scope of it, went from South Carolina to Cuba. The wind field, the tropical storm force wind field, was in excess of 400 miles wide in diameter. Irma was a monster. And uh, that was a system that obviously we will never forget. Do another check of radar as far as where Ian is at the moment. And it continues to circulate now parallel to Key West. I have been getting some wind observations in to hurricane force that have been gusting within the general vicinity of Key West. I showed you about an hour or two ago that they had a wind gust. This was at a lighthouse northwest of Key West of 85 miles an hour, the hurricane force wind gust. So we will continue to get you these updates as they come in. What I'm gonna do at the moment, I'm gonna do an update of our tidal sensors in Naples and Fort Myers. I'm gonna put those sensors into our system. I'm gonna to toss it now to Chris and Lois, but in a bit, we will show you how low our tides are getting. Okay, thank you very much. Speaking of tides, we're seeing that in Key West where we're mm -hmm. seeing so much uh, surge flooding and heavy rain there that they uh, were looking at a two foot uh, storm surge there. And look at these streets, absolutely inundated with water. And we're not even at high tide there. That's at 1130 tonight. So their situation is worsening in Key West. And if you don't understand why everybody's worried about storm surge, if that's two feet, if you, why, that's why we're worried about six and eight and 10. That's correct. Feet. That's correct. You're watching Wink News coverage of Hurricane Ian. We'll be right back. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. When you think Miami, lots of things come to mind. But when you think Homestead Miami, it's everything. The vibrancy of South Beach and the calm of the Keys. It's where you get a weekend of a million thrills, leading to one of the final chances to make it to the championship four. It's everything we all think of when we think Miami, but so much more. I love this damn racetrack. Get your tickets now at homesteadmiamispeedway.com. And it's Liberty now, closest to the rail. Drama to every drive. The exhilarating Audi SUV family. Hey, off-roaders, decorators, even lunchtimers. AutoNation Toyota is here for you and every driver, and we love getting you on the road. Right now, lease a new 2022 Toyota Highlander for just $369 a month, or new 2023 Camry for only $279 a month. Hurry to AutoNation Toyota or AutoNation.com. What drives you, drives us. AutoNation Toyota. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue. Anything but basic. Get 1.9% financing for 36 months on 10 models. Like Rogue, with best-in-class fuel economy. 
We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. New cone on Ian as soon as it comes out in about 10 minutes. In the meantime, in the same way we take stock of our homes, hospitals are doing the same thing right now, securing themselves to make sure that everybody stays safe. Yeah, Wake News health and medical reporter Amy Osher takes a look at how Lee Health is securing hospitals that are located in high-risk flood zones. With a handful of hospitals dotting the county, Lee Health evaluated the logistics of each one. All of its hospitals remain open, but like our home, some are in low-lying areas and others are old. Lee Memorial was established more than 100 years ago. The aging hospital is one of two being carefully watched. So Lee Memorial um, is one of our facilities located close to water. Um, and at that facility, we do actually have some flood mitigation um, structures that we can put up to help with that area. Um, another hospital we, we watch even probably in my mind, a little closer than that is actually Health Park. Um, it's extremely low lying down on this part of the county. Um, so we work very closely to watch the storm surge and the predictions. And we do have plans in place for, you know, the potential for evacuations, um, which isn't uncommon. Um, it's, a, it's a major task, but that's why we plan for it. Greg Fisher oversees emergency planning for the health system. He tells me they have a strategy in place if they need to evacuate Health Park. Rather than move people out, they are more likely to put up barriers to keep water from getting in. We utilize some of the inflatable type of um, devices that you can fill up with water, actually to block water. So they create kind of like barriers um, that kind of isolate certain uh, specific things that we do not want water exposed to. Staying high and dry may be impossible, but staying safe and sound is something you can plan for. Important to know they're doing that for the patients when they are at their most vulnerable. Full time work for them and great, mm -hmm. we're so grateful that they do it. Absolutely. Well, Lee County Public Safety wants you to know that they are ready to go once the storm moves out. Wake News anchor Rachel Cox Rosen is in the studio with us right now. Rachel, that includes a lot of, look at that, ambulances. Yes, this is 18 Lee County EMS ambulances and five super supervisor vehicles. They are ready to respond. They are going to be staying overnight here at the Lee County Civic Center and they'll be ready to respond after that storm goes through. Of course, if you're in one of those mandatory evacuation areas and you need help, they will not be able to respond during that storm, but they're ready to swap out any trucks that encounter any problems or mechanical fail failures on the road. And there's also going to be a backup of calls. A lot of people will be calling for help and they're going to help to respond for that. They want you to know they're here for you to help you stay safe after this storm. Back to you guys. All right, Rachel, thank you. Fort Myers Beach, we've been checking in on them a lot today, but they're already getting a lot of rain. Yeah, Wake News reporter Michael Hudak has an update on the situation there. We know that Lee County has that shelter in place recommendation. It started at eight o'clock and for good reason. We opened the door to get out of the car for this live shot. The door swung open for both of us because that's how consistent and powerful the wind is right now. Take a look at the wind, but also the rain consistently coming down. That's the hardest we've seen it pour on Fort Myers Beach in a very long time. And you've also see how it sprays around the road here. This is why people are saying and officials are saying get home, shelter in place. If you need to evacuate, this is probably the last chance that you have to do so. We've seen a couple of people on the road. We've also seen possibly some either independent contractors or LCE, CFPL trucks kind of making their way down Acero Boulevard to get ready for what could be the worst case scenario, which is landfall in or near Fort Myers Beach. So there's still a lot of time, a lot of variable, a lot of potential for the storm to swing uh, one way or another, but people here in Fort Myers Beach are preparing for the worst. They are hoping for the best. We're going to seek some more shelter right now, but as you can tell, the wind is blowing in. For now, reporting on Fort Myers Beach, Michael Hudak, Wink News. All right, stay safe out there, Michael. We are waiting to hear from the governor. That is the Emergency Operations Center in Tallahassee. The governor is expected to give us an update on statewide preparations and what's happening all around the area and in the zone most at risk in just a few minutes. That starts at 11 o'clock. We will take you there live again at the State Emergency Operations Center in Tallahassee. We'll take you there. This is the point where it's going to get intense now for the yes. next 24 hours. I, I have a special place in my heart for everybody going through this for the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time, the, the, the process of this, there's so much watching, there's so much waiting, there's so much, you know, preparation, and then you've just got to let it happen. 
we're going to all get through this. I, I, I know from after Charlie and after Wilma, people talking about how frightened they were to ring it. Yes. That's natural. Mm -hmm. I promise you, we're going to get through this and Southwest Florida will be a great place to live regardless of what it takes. Yeah, I mean, we will have daylight on our side when the worst of the winds come through. I mean, there's nothing more scary. You hear mm -hmm, from right. so many people when a, a hurricane comes through overnight when it's dark and you can't see what is going on. But you know, we're gonna be here with you this entire time. So don't go anywhere if you lose power. Do you have your radio ready? Can you listen on the radio? If you have uh, your, your devices charged up, you'll be able right. to stream, you'll be able to get on your computer and, and stay in in touch and that's going to make you feel a lot better knowing exactly what's going on and where we are in this process we're not going anywhere we'll be here with you that's right around the clock and 96.9 uh, fm and 101.1 .1 fm let's check back in with matt okay so we just got the brand new cone in and there are a few observations that we need to note uh, the wind speeds have not changed it is still at 120 miles an hour some positive news is that the pressure has gone from 947 to 952 and it has weakened a touch still a powerful storm and the wind field is growing in size so again we got to pick our battles here and it is moving to the north northeast at about 10 miles an hour so chris and lois i know we were just talking about the forecast cone and it looks like they have done it they have shifted it now into coastal lee county so earlier today, it was towards Sarasota. Now it's shifted here. Could it shift into Collier County? Hypothetically, it is still possible. It is hypothetically possible. I do not expect it to pull a, a uh, Irma-like turn, and that would be our best case scenario. I think at this point, that's off the, off the cards here and out of the cards. But this is likely going to try to make landfall around Lee County, and specifically, I, you know, if it continues in the direction that it, is, uh, that it is, it will target tomorrow afternoon as a landfall for Sanibel, Captiva, and potentially as far north as Boca Grande. So that is the current forecast from the National Hurricane Center. They have, as a, they have it as a Category 4, meaning that some strengthening is still possible. They have it as a brief Cat 4, but more than likely, we are going to have to deal with a major hurricane pushing on shore and bringing significant impacts across our area. It will happen tomorrow. But like Chris and Lois just noted, we have been through storms before in the past in Southwest Florida, and we will continue to have storms in the future. It is inevitable. For the uh, peninsula of Florida, we stick out like a sore thumb in the Atlantic and the Gulf, and this is the nature of where we live. But we are resilient with storms like this. We will clean up. We will clean up together as a community. But it's going to get rough tomorrow, and it's going to start in the morning. But the main event is during the afternoon with a major hurricane with wind gusts over 100 for the eye wall. And those impacted primarily the greatest wind with the current forecast is into Lee in Charlotte County as likely a Category 3 if not a Category 4. So that's going to be the biggest takeaway. Take the track, the cone, has shifted more to the east, and it could continue to shift all the way towards Collier County and Naples. It's not impossible, but I do not expect it to be a best-case scenario, which would be more towards Monroe County, which is largely rural. This, will, this is going to be our storm. This is our storm. And the track has it heading in our direction. So that, that is not going to change over the next 24 hours. Let's kind of do a, um, let's extrapolate where it's been and where it's going to be heading. So the yellow line is the path that it has taken. Now you can see these small variations here and there, and potentially even recently, a north wobble. But it could still wobble back. You look for the general average, okay? And the reason why I want to bring that up is let's take that general average as we go into time. I'm going to take a white line and continue it. And you will see the general direction. In National Hurricane Center, they see it too. And that general direction is into coastal Lee County. It's Sanibel Captiva. But I would still be on alert 
in Collier County. I would still be on alert in Southern Lee. If there's any deviations in this to the east, then I would still be on alert absolutely into Charlotte and Sarasota County. It's just for right now the average, look at the yellow line, where it's been and then where it's going to be heading, that would put it in the general vicinity of Sanibel, Captiva, Boca Grande. That's where at the moment I'm thinking it's going to be making landfall. So guys, I'm going to toss it back to you, but no doubt about it, tomorrow is going to be a big day for our community. I know that we can do it, and we will clean up after the storm. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Uh, Governor DeSantis is talking right now, addressing the state. Let's see if we can listen to that. Not just them, family members, as well uh, as, as their pets. We have over 176 shelters open statewide, including more than 50 special needs shelters, and, uh, and more will likely uh, be added as this storm progresses to other parts of the state. If you want to look at shelters, go to floridadisaster.org slash shelters, floridadisaster.org slash shelters. We now have 58 school districts that have announced uh, school closures due to this storm. Uh, go to fldoe.org slash storm info to get the most up-to-date information on school closures, fldoe.org slash storm info. There's now over 30,000 personnel stationed and standing by to help with power restoration, and that's across our, all of our utilities, our electric co-ops, uh, right now in the state of Florida, there's about 8,000 customers that are out of power. That's mostly in southeast Florida due to some of the things that we have seen. Uh, but, of course, that number will be into the millions uh, relatively shortly. You're going to see widespread power outages as a result of Hurricane Ian making landfall and then working its way through the state of Florida. Uh, but we're, can, we're working with all of those companies uh, to make sure that they have the ability to get in as soon as possible uh, and to help restore power uh, once the storm passes. And that's both FDOT uh, as well as Florida Highway Patrol uh, with that. FloridaDisaster.org uh, slash get a plan. If you have any questions about uh, what is going to be happening within the next 24 hours, and what's going to happen is this is a relatively slow-moving storm now. When it actually reaches landfall, it's likely to go to a trickle. Uh, that's going to dump an enormous amount of rain on the state of Florida. It is going to work its way from southwest Florida up to the central part of our state. Uh, it's going to have major impacts in places like Osceola County, Orange County, uh, and it's now projected to exit the state of Florida uh, in after passing through Volusia County. And it will go into the Atlantic Ocean and likely probably gain strength and run into some other state. But once it gets out of Florida, uh, it's going to be kicking up uh, a lot of uh, water, and that's going to impact northeast Florida. It's going to impact the St. Johns River. It's going to impact Duval County. Uh, so, so this is going to have widespread impact. So you see major hurricane, Category 4, that initial impact, you know, that's going to be severe. Uh, the storm surge is going to be severe. Uh, obviously, the, the, the water and the flooding for, for a slow-moving storm, uh, very severe impacts in southwest Florida. But those impacts are going to continue uh, going out all through the state. So, so this is not going to end up leaving the state of Florida until sometime on, on Friday morning. Uh, so th this is a lot of nasty weather uh, that we're in store for over the next few days. Uh, Kevin Guthrie is here as well as uh, Jimmy Petronas. So I'll let Kevin come up um, and then we'll hear from uh, Secretary Purdue and CFO. Thank you, Governor. Again, appreciate your continued leadership on this uh, response to Hurricane Ian. As you said, currently Hurricane Ian is bringing tropical storm force winds and rain to the Keys and South Florida. Uh, our meteorologist just mentioned to us that uh, before coming in here that our uh, tropical storm force winds may extend out at landfall 300 plus miles to the northeast. So again, as uh, the governor's already mentioned, this will be a statewide event. This is going to cause uh, conditions for flooding. We've already, uh, as the governor has uh, mentioned, already started seeing tornadoes begin to form. I urge Floridians to monitor weather alerts and seek immediate shelter if tornado warnings are issued. Tropical tornadoes will occur very quickly. They will happen overnight tonight and will occur during heavy rain. You will not be able to see them coming. If you get a weather alert, 
stay in an interior room of a secure structure away from windows and doors and protect your head from and body from any debris. If there is a flash flood warning in your area, remember it is never safe to walk or drive through flooded areas. If there is a flooded roadway, do not drive through the flooded roadway. You do not know what is going on, going on with the roadway underneath. Please turn around and do not drown in that situation. Areas in the South Florida and the Keys began to experience outages, as the governor has already mentioned. We highly encourage you, as such, if you have not lost power, please go buy an ATM and have some cash on hand before power is lost in your area. If you happen to have food night or food in your uh, refrigerators, you should limit the amount of times that you open that door. This will help keep your food and perishables intact for a longer period of time. If you are using a generator, remember to keep it elevated on a hard surface to prevent it from getting wet and increasing your chances of electrocution. Again, as we've always said, do not operate your generator indoors. Make sure you keep it outdoors and far away from windows and doors so that no exhaust can enter the home. Generator exhaust contains carbon monoxide, which will be fatal. If, re if residents have questions about resources for Hurricane Ian, I urge them to reach out to their local emergency management or public safety office. This storm will only continue to intensify if you want to leave, as the governor has said, now is your last chance. We cannot send first responders into harm's way because you decided not to leave. You must leave now. If you have any questions about the status of the storm and you don't have access to a computer, please continue to call our state assistance information line toll free at 1-800-342-3557. The number is 1-800-342-3557. As always, you can follow us on our social media on Facebook and our Twitter page at FL cert again governor thank you very much okay Jared yes thank you governor earlier today efforts were taken to enhance the ease of evacuations for Floridians by suspending tolls in Central Florida and activating uh, what we call emergency shoulder use along the I-4 corridor from Tampa to Orlando allowing mo motorists the ability to use the shoulder as an extra lane of travel helped more vehicles to evacuate safely and quickly out of the Tampa area we are seeing I-4 traffic volumes return to routine travel conditions, allowing us to pick up the emergency shoulder use and prepare for the storm's landfall. Uh, toll suspension will remain in place to aid motorists still looking to evacuate and also those that have evacuated um, to certain areas. The full list of toll facilities that are suspended can be found at fdot.gov slash en toll suspension. As the storm is close to making landfall, FDOT and FHP continue to closely monitor wind speeds and flood prone areas in case closures are needed on roads or bridges. Once wind speeds on bridges increase beyond 40 miles per hour, sustained FHP and local law enforcement will begin closing access across bridges to ensure the safety of motorists. The department has worked tirelessly with partners to strategically stage resources in order to immediately begin storm recovery efforts once the storm has passed through. We are staged and ready to perform road and bridge inspections as soon as it is safe to do so. Coastal bridges are absolutely one of our top priorities as we support the life safety mission following the impact of the storm. Additionally, emergency and pre-event contracts have been activated for post-storm operations, including roadway clearance operations, debris removal, traffic signal and lighting repairs, and generators. Having these ready ensure FDOT staff, our contractors, and our partners are ready to spring into action and immediately begin post-storm recovery efforts, including clearing roadways for emergency responders, utility workers, and other agencies to begin their efforts. Transportation partner agencies have made storm preparations and are anticipating efforts to reopen as quickly as possible. Seaports, airports, rail and transit agencies in the path of the storm have closed in anticipation of the storm making landfall and stand ready to open as soon as it is safe. 
As families continue preparations and make post-storm plans over the next few days, stay informed of traffic conditions by visiting Florida 511 at fl511.com or downloading the app on both Apple and Android devices. Thank you, Governor. Okay, Jimmy Petronas. Thank you, gentlemen. Your leadership is going to save lives. Um, our urban search and rescue teams stand ready to activate. Uh, we have five state teams that are activated with additional five uh, FEMA teams that are in play. We have over 600 uh, resources uh, to bear in addition uh, to these out-of-town teams. Uh, Virginia 1 and 2 just came back from Puerto Rico there in Miami. So as uh, this is a, a full court press on behalf of the state's resources to make sure that our folks have the peace of mind that they know that our state is there to save them at their most critical time. Um, Florida's teams are second to none. I'm incredibly proud of, of how hard and well they work together, whether it be Hurricane Michael, Irma, or Surfside Building. Uh, Florida truly has the best urban search and rescue teams in the nation. They stand ready. And Governor, thank you for your leadership. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll be back very early tomorrow morning, so we'll, we'll see you guys. A couple questions, Governor. Okay. There you hear from the Governor. He will be back early tomorrow morning with his team, but you heard some uh, somber warnings there and also some very good advice for people mm -hmm. of what to do post-storm, some of the things you have to be careful about when you lose your power and the like. So we'll have much more of that coming up in the next 24 hours. Yeah, we'll be getting there soon enough. Meantime, we got to get through it. Yes. And we have crews all up and down the coast right now. We'll start with Wing News reporter Lauren Leslie live in downtown Naples. Lauren, how are you? Hey guys, so um, it's eerily quiet down here. And I say that for two reasons. The first reason, of course, we're down on Fifth Avenue South. You know, usually this time of the night, restaurants, bars still full of nightlife. The second reason I say that is because the wind and the rain, it has significantly calmed down from what we were seeing just about an hour ago at 10 o'clock. We did shoot some video. If we can go ahead and take that. Now, this video doesn't really look like Fifth Avenue South as we all know it. Maybe the only indication, the reflection of the lights from the palm trees on the shutters you might be seeing here. Businesses, of course, putting out sandbags. We've seen flood walls. Those are in place outside of a number of storefronts, restaurants, also bars. Many just shuttering up ahead of Hurricane Ian. Now, about 9.45, 10 o'clock, I was mentioning, we just saw the wind pick up and the rain was literally coming down sideways and that's why you see all those flood walls that are in place down here the storm surge of course expected to be significant something we're likely going to see in the coming days of course our crews are going to be here around the clock monitoring the situation bringing you all of those images all right i'm going to send it back to the studio all right, Lauren, stay safe there. Sanibel is under an emergency evacuation. Well, you're not going to be forced out of your home. You may not get help when you need it the most, and the mayor even had a message about yeah, that. Yeah, the mayor sending out a letter to her residents that was very touching tonight. Holly Smith sent out a letter telling people she had left uh, the island as mm -hmm. she had recommended that her residents do and she's told them she knew it was difficult to leave their home and their island but that it was the right thing to do critically important to do because it's expected to be a category four storm very concerned about the property and the people of her island uh, very touching for sure Wink news investigative reporter celine macarthur is live along the sanibel causeway and celine tell us what the conditions are right now well, Lois, the rain is still coming down, but it seems like the winds have died down, at least for now. But if you've been watching Matt, you know it's going to get a lot worse. Sanibel is expecting a storm surge between 8 and 12 feet, so a lot of the island will be underwater. Now, the good news, after traveling Sanibel Island all day, most people have followed the orders. They have evacuated to higher and safer ground, which is also good news because EMS has left because the Sanibel firefighters have left. And as you mentioned, the mayor has left as well, and they are encouraging you to do the same. So in the meantime, you can stay with Wink News. We will help you safely navigate through the hurricane. For now, I'm live in Fort Myers. Celine MacArthur, Wink News. Thank you very much, Celine. Some people here in Southwest Florida are dealing with power outages already. Wake News anchor Rachel Cox Rosen is with us in the studio now, tracking who is not who is losing their power. It's looking like right now the Collier County area is seeing the most outages. I'm on FPL's website. This is their map here. It's looking like about 
1,800 customers are out there. Let's look a little bit farther outland, uh, or inland, excuse me. No customers out there in the Fort Myers, Lehigh Acres, uh, Bonita Springs, and Estero area. About 170 people are out of power there. A little bit more north in Charlotte County, looking like 120 out of power there. So we're starting to see these numbers go up from when I previously reported. Let's look at LCEC as well. I'm going to refresh the page to make sure we have the latest. Looking like Cape Coral is seeing the majority of those outages. This is in the uh, 33914 zip code. Looking like outages in the double digits. There are just 22 right now for LCEC. In the 33990 zip code, 36 outages there. And I want to show you this video from Perry, Georgia. These are power companies headed to Florida, getting ready to help restore power. And then this, here's a photo from uh, Collier County. This is the fairgrounds there. All those vehicles ready to respond to those power outages to try and get you power as soon as possible. Back to you guys. Yeah, that's a reassuring picture. Thank you very much, Rachel. Yeah, we like hearing it from the mm -hmm. governor and from the emergency response people. We like seeing the pictures because you know the power is going to go out for most of us and we want to know that they're there and ready to Head right. in and help. Well, we have a temporary reprieve from the heavy, heavy mm -hmm. rain that's been in downtown Fort Myers, but there's still a lot on Wink Doppler 3X. So let's go over to Chief Meteorologist Matt Devitt. Exactly right. And I do want to give you an update. This is as of the 11 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. And because of this shift in the track more south, now in Collier County, the storm surge is expected to be at 6 to 10 feet. And that was previously uh, earlier today at five to eight feet. So now that has been modified to six to 10 feet, shaded in orange into Collier County. We're still at eight to 12 for Lee County and expend, extending into Charlotte County too. And this is because of, as I show you the track, the fact that it has continued to shift south. And here's a look at the brand new cone. Time now is about 1115. This is about 15 minutes old. And instead of a landfall towards Sarasota all throughout today, it has now worked its way to putting it currently around North Captiva. I even believe a Sanibel landfall is possible. But a scenario at this point where it shifts towards Monroe County is unlikely. Nothing's impossible, but if it were to go into Monroe County, at least for us, that's the best case scenario. At the moment, I do have no computer model that shows that. Uh, I do wanna show you those models just to reinforce that. And this is about two to three hours old, and you can see that they are still clustering, and the general consensus is towards as far south as Collier County to as far north as um, Sarasota County. Boy, I'd love to be this one right here, but that will likely not be the case. That's the outlier. The common models are having it basically from Sarasota County to Charlotte, Lee, Main Impacts, and then even Collier County. You will see the opportunity for hurricane force wind gusts along the coastline. I do want to do some observations on Wink Live Doppler 3X of the core the worst part of the storm. What we've had right now, that's nothing. That's just, just gonna be some outer bands, some occasional squalls where the winds pick up, then they go down. Worst part of the storm, and I'm sure everybody's looking at it, it's right here. That's gonna be your eye wall, tornado-like wind. It's gonna go from zero to 100 real fast as it eventually makes landfall into tomorrow afternoon. So I do want to show you some of the wind observations and what's being analyzed within that eye wall. So we're gonna be using the Key West radar because of how close it is, has a fairly good sampling on what's gonna happen. And I just got a report about maybe 30 minutes ago, 91 mile per hour wind gusts at a lighthouse just to the north of the Keys. So let's do a sampling of some of the wind and the worst part of the storm is right here. It's the northern eye wall. What we're looking at, this is what we call the velocity signature, just wind for short. And let's sample some of these wind speeds and where you see the darker shading of orange and brown, it is right now being picked up at upwards of, yeah, a few gusts of 120 miles an hour are right now being analyzed in the northern eye wall. Literally tornado-like winds, and this is fairly destructive. 
This is the type of wind that can cause power outages for days, if not weeks. That is what is expected to head into Lee, Charlotte, and Sarasota County, and even Collier County seeing hurricane force wind gusts. That is right now being analyzed with radar out of Key West. So I just want to give you a heads up that that is the worst part of the storm, and that is what is going to be pushing onto our beautiful Southwest Florida coastline as we hit tomorrow afternoon. We will get Southwest Florida back to what we are used to, but it is going to be rough tomorrow, especially into the afternoon, as that wind-driven surge is also pushed up upwards of about 8 to even 12 feet. Let's see how it's doing on its general track. And because we have an equal distribution, see how it's right in the middle, meaning that everything's going according to plan for now. If there's any deviations, both west or east, we'll let you know. But look how it's right in the middle. The yellow line is what it's been doing. The red line is what is forecasted. So notice how it's right in the middle of the eye, which let's do a sampling. The eye diameter, I'm going to zoom back in. The size of the eye is right now about 44 miles wide in diameter. Let's try from north to south. Same deal. So it's about a 40 mile wide eye. And that is where it gets calm. So if this makes landfall for Sanibel, you'll get some tornado like winds and then it gets calm. It's also not impossible that you see the sun come out for tomorrow afternoon. And also there are oftentimes with hurricanes in the past, it's also not unheard of that you see a significant amount of birds where the birds get trapped in the eye because literally the winds won't let them escape in the core and that eventually once they're on land, they just cannot wait to see the land. And don't be surprised to see that for tomorrow because they literally can't escape over the water. They have to wait until it pushes on shore. We've oftentimes seen that being picked up. And I'm curious if we have that, not at the moment, but that is something that has happened from time to time. But the corridor of the worst part of the storm, let's measure it. The eye wall is about from north to south, 26 miles. So it's about 26 miles long. This storm, let's take a look at the cone. The cone track has the speed at the moment at about 10 miles an hour, meaning that the worst part of the storm could very well last that northern eye wall for about an hour or two. So Hurricane force wind gusts, that worst part of the storm, just with the first eye wall, could be possible for about an hour or two. Now, that's the part of the storm. We've got to treat it like a hurricane. Get away. You've got to treat it like a tornado. And get away from windows. Get to the interior as we will see some pretty destructive winds expected as it pushes on shore. Let's do a sampling of how we're doing right now in southwest Florida as we try to get to bed, try to get some sleep here. We've had tornado warnings all evening, including destructive tornadoes. Uh, thankfully, not in our area so far. The destructive tornadoes have been primarily towards the East Coast. And for example, these are the tornado reports that we've had so far today. And you can see all the areas, these icons right here, notice how so far we have not had any locally. That has been a wonderful blessing so far, but notice how we have tornado touchdowns from near West Palm all the way towards Fort Lauderdale and extending into the Everglades. The final thing I would like to go over before we toss it back to uh, Chris and Lois is where we go from here. So right now our tide levels are fairly low and literally the water's getting drawn out with the wind wrapping around Ian. It will be parallel of Marco Island around and near sunrise. There's that eye wall. We just covered it. We just analyzed the wind on radar of about 100 to 120 miles an hour with Key West radar. That's what's going to be approaching southwest Florida. This is our storm, folks. This, whether we like it or not, and hey, if I had all the power in the world, I wish we didn't have to deal with this, but this is the hand that we've been dealt. There's the system. There's where it's going to be situated at about 7 a.m. Then as we go throughout time, this is around noon. Look at the winds, how they will start to change. No longer from the northeast, but coming in from the south. That's when the surge levels will start to increase, and they could increase fairly quickly. So that will gradually go up throughout the basically sunrise 
through lunchtime time frame. This is around noon. As we play this out, this is our wink model that shows what it could look like with our future radar. And I would say anywhere from Manasota Key to Sanibel, landfall possible. The models have been trending towards Sanibel and Captiva as the landfall, but I would say that entire stretch, look at what you're going to be dealing with, and that is that eye wall with hurricane force wind and destructive wind leading to power outages. And uh, if you're listening to me, Sanibel, Captiva, if the stubbornness is getting the best of you and you're saying, oh, the heck with the storm, I'll be fine, this is a different animal. This is not like the other storms. This is in our worst case scenario positioning. Please, you got a couple more hours, evacuate. If you're listening to me, Boca Grande, Sanibel, Captiva, especially along the coastline. This is the status as of five o'clock with the, with the landfall, which could happen even around three and four, if not sooner. And then the core of it pushes inland. We wrap around some drier air because of the counterclockwise motion. That's why I see some breaks. It's not that consistent wall of rain. You do see some breaks, and that is Ian wrapping around some drier air. There's the positioning at 11. And then by around 8 and 9, we still have that wraparound wind pushing up the water. So we still get surge on Thursday, but it's not going to be to the caliber of what we will see for Wednesday afternoon as well as Wednesday evening. So Chris and Lois, it's going to be rough for tomorrow, but no doubt we will get through this. We will. And this time tomorrow we'll be looking ahead at yeah. what's next rather yeah. than analyzing what could come. Right. You're watching Wink News' continuous coverage of Hurricane Ian. We'll be right back. This is Wink News' special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. I'm Sharon. That smoke can cause my throat cancer. My life isn't the same after all those surgeries and treatments. But walking every day makes me feel like myself again. Well, almost. Tobacco Free Florida offers free nicotine patches to help start your quit journey. 1 877 You Can Now. Over the years, people have asked me, how did your firm get so big? The answer is simple. We won a lot. Why do you think some of these other firms are so much smaller? Maybe it's because not many people hire them. In this business, you grow by winning. As America's largest injury law firm, we have more lawyers than any other injury firm. Proof's in the pudding. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but basic. Get 1.9% financing for 36 months on 10 models, like Rogue, with best in class fuel economy. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we were getting a lot of questions from you. Understandably, we are doing our best to answer them all as on TV, but we have put our experts at the mm -hmm. table here with us mm -hmm. to try to get answers to the questions that perhaps we haven't been able to answer for you yet. You started to touch on this, Matt. I think one of the first things is about why, what makes them different, and you mentioned the, dis, the size. Yeah. But are there some other things that maybe people should be most concerned about when they think about these past hurricanes that they've lived through mm -hmm. and maybe have forgotten some things about and now we're dealing with something that's very threatening. Well said, and every storm is different. And I had touched on this a few minutes ago where you get some people that said, oh, I did fine during Irma. This is, you know, no big deal. I'm not gonna prep for this. You get others that during Irma, they were without power for two to three sure. weeks. Mm -hmm. And that will be the case with Ian. There are parts of our area 
that will fare worse than others, and there were, will be parts that do a lot better. But it depends on where that eye wall goes. And when it comes to the impact, it, there are a lot of things to factor in. The angle of approach. Mm -hmm. This is a different angle of approach compared to, let's say, Wilma, mm -hmm. or even with, mm -hmm. with Irma. You know, that was primarily Monroe County that saw the worst mm -hmm. associated mm -hmm. with both hurricanes. We will likely not have that happen. So we get that northeastern quadrant. That's the worst part. And that's going to be bringing the maximum impact, the maximum surge to Lee, Charlotte, as well as Sarasota County. And also the speed. As you can imagine, the slower storm goes, sure. you feel more, more of that influence. And you have greater time for that water to pile up. Right now, the storm is going at about 10 miles an hour. Right. That is either average, if not slightly low, uh, slower than normal. And then the other thing is the size. We talked about so much about how Charlie, mm -hmm. it, was, it was small but mighty. Mm -hmm. You know, winds of 150 miles an hour, Cat 4, absolutely devastated Lee and especially Charlotte County. But the scope of Charlie, as I show you a quick visual example on Weather 2, you can see the variations in the size compared to Charlie, compared to Ian, and compared to Irma, just an absolutely massive storm Irma was. Now, I will tell you that Ian is growing as we speak, guys, so the scope and the influence of the wind field, the rain, and the surge will be felt all up and down our coastline. When do you think, I mean, you gave us time for uh, impact and what we'll see on Thursday. When is it so far gone that we're just done? Well, uh, Friday is the transitional day. Okay. Friday we start to get back to life as normal. We clean up. Mm -hmm. We'll be sure. cleaning up. I hope for not as long as weeks, but um, and then by the weekend we actually will get a, a parting gift from Ian. Wraps around drier air, lowers our chances for rain. But Friday's the transitional day with the overall weather pattern. Juliana, mm -hmm. you've been following um, tornadoes all night tonight and that will continue on as well right any and any band of at any time can a tornado be developing in yes, there yes yes the tornado potential lasts through tomorrow um, until we see that eye the center of the storm pass through the state of Florida. Um, so this lasts again, we've looked at that graphic earlier today, um, that tornado potential all through tonight, through tomorrow, into the late afternoon more so. Um, so with these squally lines with these mm -hmm. bands, that's that, it, as we've talked about, that amplified wind field um, is what produces that spin in the atmosphere. It's a, it's a very heightened um, environment for things like tornadoes. So yes, we're not out of the wind for additional tornadoes going forward. So you really have to wait until you get the clear from the meteorologists and you're clear from your emergency officials yep. in your county for it to be safe to go to because there's going to be destruction exactly. and there's going to be water. Well, and, and another thing to keep in mind is I know for those who are maybe um, streaming us online, they've evacuated to another part of the mm -hmm. state. Something to keep in mind is that if you come home too early, you are potentially inviting more problems than what you started with because if you come home to a home that doesn't have power mm -hmm. and the right. temperature inside gets right. to 80, 85 degrees plus, you know, instead of the nice cool spot that you had evacuated to, you're inviting even more problems. So what I know we will do here at Wink, mm -hmm. along with emergency management officials, we will let you know when it's okay to come back. As tough as it is to anticipate like this and wait for this to come it is very difficult post hurricane to live oh, through that yes. without power without the 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 things you need gas can sometimes be mm -hmm. in short supply for a while it is very very difficult if you're here after irma right after irma and even in lee county here where we didn't have anywhere near the worst of it in this part of the county there were still, I mean, I can remember being in a gas line where it's, okay, only 20 minutes, yep. I'll get gas now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a couple of times where it's like, I need to buy food. Where, where can I buy where food I right buy now? Food? That's a very realistic potential situation for a few days. So, yeah, that's right. If you're streaming somewhere and you can stay there a couple extra days, it'll all still be here when you get back. And there are going to be some sites that are going to be uh, unique to see. I remember during Irma, the National Guard mm -hmm. was in town yep. helping to distribute and the lines of gas as right. well as food, mm -hmm. water, the necessities. So it's going to be an adjustment, no doubt, during as well as after the storm. Another thing I can't stress enough, though, is uh, for those that have generators, mm -hmm. please, please, yes. please, no operation of the generator in the garage near the home and especially 
not inside. Minimum distance, 15 feet. 15 feet. Very from important. The home. Very yeah. important. Yeah, most injuries in these storms happen after. Yeah. Yep. For right. people, either, you know, chainsaws, mm -hmm. climbing a tree, off to ladders. try to clear, mm -hmm. call, yep, mm -hmm. fall off the ladder, fall off the roof, or mm -hmm. something with the generator. So yeah. get through it and then be careful afterwards, too, because you can. It can be dangerous even after. Yeah, we'll be passing along all that vital information to you not not only now during this during the the height of the storm, but post hurricane as well. So you can count on Week News for that all throughout the the event. Yeah, we want to keep checking in with our reporters. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Zach Oliveri, who's at the Charlotte County Emergency Operations Center, locked in for the night, Zach. Chris, that's right. We're all set up in here. We got our cots. We have our food. We're hungering down like they've been telling us ever since we got here about 7 o'clock. People, they've been telling everyone, stay inside. You don't want to be out in this storm, especially as this thing starts to come in you know, over the next few hours. And that, like I said, that has been the message ever since we got here. This is Todd Dunn, the PIO with Charlotte County Fire EMS. It's going to be the point where you're going to hunker down. You're going to shelter in place, right? It's going to, because it's not going to be safe to be on the road when the tropical, for, uh, tropical storm winds hit us about 40 miles per hour. All of our first responders are going to come off the road as well because it won't be safe for them. So we don't want anybody else out there either for that same reason. Now, for those who decide to ride out the storm here and not evacuate like they've been instructed to do, the best advice I've been given is that for those who are staying, tie everything in, don't have any loose objects that could turn into flying debris near their home, stay inside, don't go outside to take pictures or video of the storm, stay inside, say where you are, and we'll continue to ride this out until we get to the finish line. And once we get there, I was told that the response plan is that Public Works and Charlotte County Fire will be out there to assess the damage with Charlotte County equipped with chainsaws to go through any damage that might be out there on the roads to clear that out uh, as quickly as possible. Live in Charlotte County, Zach Oliveri, Wink News. All right, thanks, Zach. Very good to have our reporters embedded with the EOC so we can right. get the very latest information and quickly after post-storm. Yep, well. and nice to know that they're there and that's one of the safest places mm -hmm. to be is it for is. them to be it in is. there, so we're yep. glad he's there. You're watching Wake News. We'll be right back. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Every storm is different. Every story unique. But our commitment to you never changes. If it's your storm, it's our storm. And we'll face it together. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. As millions flock to the metaverse, many are experiencing unnecessary pain and suffering, terrible car crashes, frightening trip and falls, and on-the-job injuries. Our army of over 800 attorneys and 4,000 support staff have recovered billions for clients just like you. Injured? Just dial pound law. That's all. Morgan & Morgan, America, and now the universe's largest injury law firm. And it's Liberty Bell, closest to the rear, around the back turn, and he's the hardest shot. That's the big up the Drama to every drive. The exhilarating Audi SUV family. Hey, off-roaders, decorators, even lunch timers. AutoNation Toyota is here for you and every driver, and we love getting you on the road. Right now, lease a new 2022 Toyota Highlander for just $369 a month, or new 2023 Camry for only $279 a month. Hurry to AutoNation Toyota or AutoNation.com. What drives you, drives us. AutoNation Toyota. Every storm is different. Every story unique. But our commitment to you never changes. If it's your storm, it's our storm. And we'll face it together. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. 
We're going to take you to downtown Fort Myers right now because it is so close to the river and there is a lot of concern for storm surge there. Wake News reporter Andriana Shepard is live for us downtown uh, and looks like maybe you're the only person downtown. Uh, yeah, I'm the only person downtown. If you caught us about five minutes ago, you would have seen about two families walking around, seeing everything or lack thereof. But there's nobody here now in terms of wind. It's a little windy. It looks like it may have just stopped for a little bit. It's barely sprinkling. We've definitely seen worse afternoon storms in our parking lot earlier this year. But a lot of the stores, if not all the stores, shut down. But so far, this is the only actual store we see that's boarded up. And as you can see, Izzy has a sign that says, due to Hurricane Ian, we will not be open for the safety of our guests and team members. I would venture to say that would be like just about every store down here will not be open for the next couple of days for the safety of you and the safety of their team members. But like we said, there's nobody really out here. There's not much weather going on, if I'm honest, but still wouldn't want to come out here if you don't have to. So live in Fort Myers, Andreana Shepard, Wink News. All right, thank you very much, Andriana. Right now, multiple areas in southwest Florida are under evacuation orders. Wake News anchor Nicole Gabe is in the studio with a look at those evacuations. Yeah, exactly. So let's go ahead and go through them. So make sure you're paying attention very closely to these evacuation orders. So in Lee County, we're going to head down to Lee County right here. Let me zoom in real quick. So Lee County, this is the area that we're looking at right here. Lee County, all of Zone A. B and select parts of C are under evacuation orders in Lee County. A, again, let me remind you, A is the red. B is the orange right here. And you can see right here, this corresponds over on the uh, side right here. The letters correspond to the color. So C is yellow. Now, keep in mind, though, that in Lee County, this covers portions of zone C between North Cape Coral and the portion of zone C in North Fort Myers. So that is west of I-75. So make sure you are looking at the area where you live and the corresponding colors to the letter. Many parts of North Cape Coral and North Fort Myers, though, are not in zone C. So that's very important. Let's go up to Charlotte County. Let me zoom up a little bit right here. So we're going to head up to Charlotte County. We zoom out a little bit right here. Okay, so Charlotte County evacuation orders are for the zone A, which is red, zone B, that's orange. Now, this also includes those living on the barrier islands right here along Charlotte County. Islands of Don Pedro Island, the Knight Island, Palm Island, Little Gasparilla Island, Gasparilla Island, and Manitsota Key, as well as residents in any zones living in a mobile home and also in trailers in that area. Now, let's go ahead and go south. We're going to head down to Collier County, right down here. Uh, Collier County, we're talking about Naples area. The mandatory evacuations are for the zone A in Collier County. So those living in the immediate coastal areas, that would be west and south of US 41 in those low lying flood prone areas and also mobile homes. Now the city of Marco Island area down over here. Now those are mandatory evacuations. This all comes after recent estimates of the storm surge predicts to be six to nine feet. Also continuing to increase those conditions warrant an evacuation in that area. The city says now is the time for those residents to leave the island. But again, though, if you are looking for your evacuation zone and you want to take a closer look, this website is Florida disaster dot maps right here. Know your zone. You can also find that on the winknews.com website. We have all the information for you if you need to check this out. Chris. All right. And if you are near the coast and you're still checking those out, do it now. Please. Yes, absolutely. And uh, no time to waste. No time to waste. It is time to go. Look at this. The National Guard gearing up in southwest Florida. A Wink News crew took footage outside the Lehigh Acres Library. This is where guardsmen will wait out Hurricane Ian and get directions from the Lee County Emergency Operations Center. Their presence comes as Governor DeSantis announced that 5,000 guardsmen have been activated and pre-positioned all across the state. Emergency services are suspended in Matlache and Pine Island. Fire crews say any calls to 911 will be logged and then responded to once the, the weather conditions allow. And we have 18 Lee County EMS ambulances and five supervisor vehicles that are bunked in for the night at the Civic Center. And when the when Hurricane Ian passes, they're going to swap out for any trucks that encounter problems or mechanical failures on the road, and they'll boost operations as crews work through any backed up emergency calls. Hurricane Ian has knocked out power across Cuba. Cuba's electric union said in a statement that work was underway to gradually restore the service to 11 million people. That's pretty much all the people on Cuba working during the night tonight. 
An area dealing with a lot of flooding right now, the Florida Keys. We do thank you, Russ McCaskey, joining us now. Russ, you have some video from the Keys. Right, yeah, earlier this afternoon, about three, four o'clock, the storm was level with, uh, Ian was level with the Florida Keys. As it pushed on a little bit farther north, that wraparound rain really did a number, uh, particularly on Key West. Take a look at some of these videos here. This one says storm surge submerging uh, streets in Key West as Hurricane Ian passes by. The wind and rain continue to be relentless. You can see the rain there. Let's show you another one. That one's kind of dark. This one's a little bit more lit up. The wind's so strong. Storm surge is even stronger. Key West roads look like they're part of it. An ocean that one from a CBS Miami reporter you could see just all that water coming through could be a precursor of something that we may see tomorrow we'll have to watch it very closely Chris and Lois all right Russ thank you of course schools are closed Lee Collier Charlotte DeSoto all closed through Thursday at this point expect to hear more about that later in the week Cape Coral Charter and Hendry closed for now through Wednesday. Again, we're expecting to hear more on that as the week progresses. And today, FGCU extended their closures through Friday. FW, FSW closed through Thursday. Kaiser University closed tomorrow. Hodges University closed through Thursday. Online classes, though, continue as normal. You're watching Wink News coverage of Hurricane Ian. We'll be right back. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Charlie Crist is increasing costs, hurting Florida families. He voted for inflationary spending that exploded the cost of gas, groceries, and housing, costing Florida families $500 per month. Crist voted to increase taxes on gas and opposes affordable American energy. Charlie approved the largest increase in taxes and fees in Florida history. Charlie Crist, he wants to raise your taxes. I don't like to raise taxes. I did it as governor. Would you do it again? If necessary, I would. Today, push harder, push forward, push vigorously. There are things that I am hiding from people that I'm trying to inspire. You can do whatever you set your mind to. I feel like a hypocrite a lot of the times. Don't give up on yourself ever. Smoking, I hide it because I'm ashamed of it. I want to get out of the shadow. I want to show people there is light away from the darkness. I am going to quit. Visit TobaccoFreeFlorida.com to find free resources to help you quit your way. My crypto's down. No coiner. Trust. This'll move. Dude, they're fragging seats. Rest, rest, hit me. I got my ult. That's 472 horsepower and 395 pound-feet of torque. Well, what's up with this team sheet? Inverted fullback and a false nine? The limited slip diff lets you hammer the throttle. You don't get it until you go all in. Poggers. Stick it in the onion bag. The Lexus IS, all in on the sports sedan. I met Governor DeSantis in 2009 when he was on active duty. He was a Navy commissioned officer and served in Iraq. When you're advising SEAL Team 1, you're making life and death decisions every day. And as someone who has served side by side with him, he is selfless and he will do what is in your best interest, not his best interest. The Navy's core values are honor, courage, and commitment. And Governor DeSantis embodied those core values on active duty, and he embodies them every day as the governor of our state. Governor DeSantis is a true servant leader. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Track of what's going on county by county and at the emergency operations centers in a lot of the in a lot of our counties. And Peter Fleischer's been up in Sarasota County and he's at the emergency operations center up there where they are very concerned as well and keeping a very close full watch on Hurricane Ian. It was just earlier this morning that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis stopped by to speak at this facility, the Sarasota County Emergency Operations Center. He urged Floridians all along the west coast of the state to please evacuate your area. If you might be in danger, if you might live in a flood zone, it's not worth taking the chance. Now, we did observe people in homes and businesses here in Sarasota County heeding that advice, evacuating filling up their tanks with gas, boarding up homes and businesses before they left the area. But officials in Sarasota County have been alarmed at how few people they have reporting to emergency shelters. They are urging citizens, even if you don't think that you're in immediate danger, these shelters are going to be more safe than a home. Now, if you're in an RV park or you're in a mobile home, those homes are not built to withstand the types of winds and rains and storm surges that Hurricane Ian might provide. And officials had a very grave warning for people in those communities. Those homes are not designed to handle a hurricane. 
So those are the folks, really, I'm talking to is the people that live in mobile homes right now and the people that live along the water in any of these A areas. Even if you're in a high rise and you think you're going to be fine because you're on the eighth floor, remember, you're going to lose power. You're going to be surrounded by water. Sarasota County officials urge residents it's not too late to act if you can get out of the area tonight. They predict that wind and storm conditions will probably make roads impossible to navigate around 2, 3, or 4 o'clock on Wednesday morning. So if you have the opportunity and you're thinking about evacuating, do so. It's better to be safe than sorry. Reporting in Sarasota County, Peter Fleischer, WIC News. All right, Peter, thank you. WIC News sat down earlier with Senator Rick Scott to talk about Hurricane Ian and what he has to say to all of you. Storm surge is a killer. Um, Water is a killer. Um, so always think about it this way. Um, you can rebuild your house. You can't be rebuild your life. If you're in an evacuation zone, if they've told you to evacuate, do it now. Don't wait. I'll do everything. I, Marco Rubio and I, we made sure that the you know Joe Biden declared a um, uh, a national emergency before landfall. So we did that. So I'll do everything I can to, uh, can to be helpful. Senator Scott says he knows FEMA is committed to doing everything they can to help, and he will as well. And Senator Marco Rubio gave so an that update on resources from FEMA. He says the supplies have been pre-positioned between Georgia, Alabama, and here in Florida. So that includes about 3,500 reservists, so 2,500 reservists. Uh, that are ready to go. Two urban search and rescue teams that are now stationed in Miami. There's a third search and rescue team that's now stationed in Mobile, Alabama. And then they have a 7,500 person search capacity force ready to deploy within 24 hours if they're needed. And Senator Rubio also says the Army Corps of Engineers has a power restoration stationed in Alabama that will help utility companies bring back power when it is safe. We want to remind you, too, that we are simulcasting on radio through all of this because at some point you are likely to lose power. Um, so you can listen along. We'll be simulcasting on 96.9 Wink FM and 101.1 Wave FM. Good idea to power up all your devices. Keep your phones charged, everything tonight before we lose power. So then you can keep in touch as well. And near you so you hear any kind yeah. of a weather alerts that come yeah. in. We'll be right back. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Wink is closely tracking this developing situation. Only Wink has live Doppler 3X, three times more powerful than any radar in Southwest Florida. Keeping you up to the minute when every minute matters. Wink News, the weather authority. Injured? Call Wilbur Smith Law, serving Southwest Florida for 50 years. When you think Miami, lots of things come to mind. But when you think Homestead, Miami, it's everything. The vibrancy of South Beach and the calm of the Keys. It's where you get a weekend of a million thrills, leading to one of the final chances to make it to the championship four. It's everything we all think of when we think Miami, but so much more. I love this damn racetrack. Get your tickets now at homesteadmiamispeedway.com. When a storm comes through, I talk to my son and my daughter and I say, listen, dad's going to be away. And they understand that. They understand dad's going to, to help other people. What are we trying to do for the people is give them a lot of hope. They're seeing their neighborhoods coming on. We're not done until everybody's power is restored. For my younger daughter, you know, it's, it's tough. I hope that she goes back one day and says, you know what? Dad did what he could for the community and this made a difference. When people need our help, we answer the call. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but Basic. Get 1.9% financing for 36 months on 10 models, like Rogue, with best in class fuel economy. Get 0% interest for 12 months this week at Recreational Warehouse. Full-featured hot tubs from just $19.95 in Fort Myers, Naples, and Port Charlotte. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. 
Thank you for staying with us for our continuing coverage of Hurricane Ian. Uh, we just got that forecast cone update at 11 o'clock, and we're watching the storm bands come on to southwest Florida over and over. And uh, because it's, you know, a mere minutes from morning, right. our morning meteorologist Casey Sherman is right. back to go through it all with us. Good to see you. <laughs> yes, good morning. We're heading into now midnight, and we're now heading closer, of course, to the main event here, which is going to begin really taking off beginning later this morning. We're talking about at around uh, 5, 6 a.m. First for Collier County and then moving up the coast throughout the day. We're likely going to be looking at some of the worst conditions beginning late in the morning and early in the afternoon. Right now, this is still a very strong hurricane and we still have the potential of seeing some additional strengthening as it approaches our coast, 120 mile per hour hurricane pressure down at 952 millibars, and it is moving to the north northeast now at 10 miles per hour. We have seen little wobbles a little bit off to the north and east, which unfortunately with the latest forecast cone, it has brought it now closer into our area where we currently do have a projected landfall. It's somewhere in along these Captiva Sanibel area up through areas like Boquilia and out through portions of Charlotte County through about the Charlotte Harbor and Punta Gorda area. And we've been talking about this really throughout the week. Any little small shifts and wobbles to the east with the system can potentially bring this closer and which means a big time a change in our impacts. Unfortunately, this scenario for us it is uh, not looking, it is just a bad overall scenario uh, just in general to deal with. This is a worst case scenario, at least at the moment, but we prepared for it. We prepared for uh, what was certainly the possibility of seeing that shift farther off to the south and east. And so these are just kind of the cards that we've been dealt here that we will continue to deal with as we head into especially the next 12 to 24 hours. Because we have seen that shift to the south and east, even a bit more with that forecast track, we have seen some updates still to our peak storm surge forecasts. 8 to 12 foot storm surge still for Charlotte County, the Clusatchee River, Pine Island Sound, down through areas like Fort Myers Beach and Estero Bay. We also have about 6 to 10 foot storm surge. These are the numbers that have been increasing for Collier County, so be mindful of that. As we head into out, uh, throughout the day, it's going to be as far as high tide goes. And remember, high tide, rather the storm surge forecast factor is in high tide. But at high tide, we would be looking at those water levels at their highest as water starts being pushed up against our shoreline. And it's going to unfortunately coincide with when the system becomes parallel to the coast and when they're dealing with the most storm surge in areas like Englewood, Gasparilla Sound, and also Charlotte Harbor. You can see those high tide times, 4 p.m., 3.31 in Gasparilla Sound, 6.04 p.m. Charlotte Harbor as we travel down towards Boca Grande. High tide is at 3.46 p.m. For Mount Lachey, same kind of thing. Our high tide ranging between about 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. for portions of Lee County. Cape Coral about 6.13 p.m. Captiva about 2.38 p.m. And again, this is when we're going to be looking at the water that's being pushed up from the system coupled with high tide to likely lead to that higher range of storm surge in that forecast. But that forecast does account for high tide, which is why we get kind of that range of numbers here. You can see the red, and this is likely worst case scenario. This particular map a lot of times is used by emergency management, so it does show that worst case scenario that's only exceeded one in ten times. But we'll prepare for the worst case scenario. Nevertheless, nine foot storm surge for those areas in red. That includes portions of the Southern Cape right along the banks of the Clusatchee River, out through areas like Iona and down through Fort Myers Beach. The areas in orange here, about six to nine feet, three to six foot storm surge for those areas in yellow, one to three feet in area for areas in blue. And we can, uh, coming up here, break down kind of specifics area by area. And if you want to know a specific area for exactly where you live, specifically what your storm surge is, you can go to the National Hurricane Center website, scroll down, click on where it says Hurricane Ian, there is a storm inundation map that you can click on and zoom into exactly your neighborhood level. Traveling down through Collier County, the times of your high tide also will be lining up fairly closely when you start to see some of the strongest of the onshore winds 
pushing that water up. So we're looking at high tide at 245 in Naples, 321 in Marco Island. We can see those areas in red being highlighted for Marco Island down through Everglades City and even up through areas uh, like Kiwaden Island where a nine foot storm surge will be a possibility nine foot plus for those areas. We have seen still some differences as far as our models have gone when we're now honing in on exactly where this is going to be making landfall and that still will be making a difference. We're going to be looking at what will hopefully be a system that might be a little bit farther offshore, but right now that does not look likely. American models showing that uh, landfall a little bit farther north still. Englewood, a bit, or rather the, uh, or the uh, Hurricane Center is showing it with the National Hurricane Center track near the Englewood area. European model shows it closer to the Cape Hayes Peninsula. The farther south we have this, the higher chance we have of seeing that eye wall, the worst part of the storm, move directly through southwest Florida. So the better kind of possibility, even though all of these would unfortunately still lead to some significant outcomes here in southwest Florida, would be more of, a, more of a northerly track because more of us at least would be missing that eye wall. And if any kind of wobble off to the east, that would potentially be changing that potential landfall location. Now we've had a lot of comparisons to Charlie because the system, at least the track, is fairly reminiscent to Charlie. I will say Charlie was a much smaller system than Ian. With Ian, we're really expecting this wind field to start to expand as it works its way up the coast. So Charlie was smaller. Unfortunately with Ian, it is going to be a much larger system. That means those hurricane force winds and tropical storm force winds range into a wider area. More of us have the possibility and likelihood now of feeling those impacts, which is why we continue with hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings, even for those inland areas. You can see hurricane force winds highlighted in red. Those are what are going to be entering into Lee County, Charlotte County, and also up through Sarasota County, and even potentially down through portions of Collier County. Those are those wind gusts of over 74 miles per hour and could be as strong as about 115 miles per hour with this particular kind of storm. So look at those future wind gusts, what you can expect as we head through today. As we head into the remainder of today, rather this evening, we're going to continue to see these winds pick up. We have seen some gusts around 30 miles per hour so far down in areas like Marco Island. As we take you through about lunchtime, this is for, this is for now about today, now that we're almost on that midnight cusp. Uh, but this is for lunchtime Wednesday, so this upcoming day. We're looking at hurricane force winds beginning for areas like Sanibel, uh, close for areas like Englewood and uh, Cape Coral. They'll be because it looks like the model is updating here in real time, actually. Uh, but we will continue to see what should be more of those winds traveling up the coast. The wind comes first, and then we'll be looking at the potential to see that storm surge as the system gets closer to us and we see that onshore flow. I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to the anchors. Looks like my graphics are a bit frozen right now, and I'll get back to this in just a bit. All right, Casey, thank you. We're just switching gears here. Joining you now, uh, Corey Lazar, myself, and uh, if you're up late, we're going to be here with you through the coverage. If you're just waking up with us this morning, there have been quite a few changes in this shift again. Unfortunately, not in our favor. Yeah, not in our favor. You know, for a lot of you, I think if you were on the fence about leaving, yeah. uh, the newest shift of the cone may have helped make your decision. Uh, you know, people in my family have left now uh, trying to get out of harm's way just in case. And uh, we heard the governor say earlier and his team, uh, if you are needing to leave the area, you still have a few hours, but you know, the longer you wait, the more dangerous it is just to be on the roadways, even if you are driving across the state. In our coastal communities, Sanibel, Fort Myers Beach, there are so many areas that if you have been trying to hold out, hoping that that shift would happen more westwardly, now is the time and you do have time still, but it's that window is very much so shrinking. We do just want to remind you as we are going to be heading through these next 24 hours where it's guaranteed we are going to lose power at some point. If you have a battery operated radio, we are going to be simulcasting and walking you through every step of the way on 96.9 Wink FM as well as 101.1 Wave FM. So you'll be able to hear our meteorologists. They are going to walk you through as Ian approaches what you should be experiencing, how long you should be staying in the interior of your home. And for the next few hours, we're going to be guiding you through 
What's next here as far as what to expect with Ian? Let's go ahead and get over to anchor Russ McCaskey because, Russ, overnight we had some of those tornadoes pop up, and it looks like we're getting a sense of some of the damage, not here in southwest Florida, but other areas. Yeah, Lindsay, we had tornado warning after tornado warning after tornado warning. A lot of choppy air, a lot of turbulence in the air. They also had that same thing over on the east coast of Florida. We have some pictures here. These photos coming in from the North Perry Airport in Hollywood, where they say a possible tornado touchdown. So let's walk you through and show you some of these. Look at this airplane just turned completely upside down. Several of these planes were just tossed around apparently like rag dolls. You see this one where the, the wings also appear to be significantly damaged. This plane actually on the, uh, t the, the propeller of that other one. And then here's a couple more uh, of the planes that have been smashed up together. I want to show you one more. Take a look at this picture. Look at the wings. That's definitely not something you want to see. Definitely they've had a lot of difficult weather over there on the East Coast. We've had some choppy weather, a lot of tornado warnings as well. Some that we're also going to have to watch as this storm gets closer and closer to landfall. Let's send it back to Corey and Lindsay. All right, Russ, thank you very much. And if we can, if we can take a uh, wink live Doppler 3X full, we just want to give you an overview of what this is looking like now on our Doppler radar. And here you can see those bands really coming through. And if you're probably in your home, you're probably hearing a lot of that wind outside howling. Um, but again, that is not the main event. These are just the bands from Hurricane Ian starting to come on shore. Yeah, I do encourage anyone who's been up through Tuesday night to try to get some rest because uh, we're going to be still here in the morning when you wake up and we'll be able to guide you through it. And Wednesday is going to be a very long day, I guess, as we are entering Wednesday right now. Charlotte County is one area very much a concern. And we have reporter Zach Oliveri standing by live right now at the Emergency Operations Center so he can give us the very latest. Zach, I know it's been a long day for you. What's going on there? Lindsay, everyone is just getting some rest. It's been a long day for many people, you know, here at the Emergency Operations Center. And everyone is just getting ready for what should be a very stress-filled and just hoping for the best, preparing for the worst type of day when the storm gets here. I was able to take a look outside through the windows here about what exactly we're starting to see right now. We're starting to see more rain pick up, the wind's starting to pick up, the rain's coming in sideways. It's We're starting to feel it a little bit up here and everyone's just, the biggest message that I've gotten since I got here around seven o'clock yesterday is that people need to take this very seriously, especially here in Charlotte County and frankly all over Southwest Florida. In Charlotte County, they're instructing people to stay inside. Don't be tempted to go outside and take a look at the storm. Stay inside for those who didn't evacuate like they were supposed to. You're in, there's some danger involved with that, but they assure that if you stay inside, make sure all the fl any potential flying debris around your home is secure you might be okay. And the biggest thing is we're, we're gonna have an update later this morning at 10 a.m. about what's next with the response. And they also assured me when I was here, why, since we've been here, that once the storm is over and the 40 mile per hour winds will recede because once that hits, they won't be able to come out and help you. Once that goes through, Public Works will be out assessing the damage, and also with Charlotte County Fire, will be out there with chainsaws to clear out any road debris and any damage that's in the road to clear those roadways out so we could get back to some sense of normalcy pretty quickly. In, live in Charlotte County, Zach Oliveri, Wink News. All right, Zach, thank you very much. Let's get out now to Wink News. Uh, uh, weather with meteorologist Casey Sherman and Casey you're taking a look at wink Doppler 3x what do you make of the latest radar scans and now this eye wall that is so evident it is yeah and that is the strongest part of the storm taking a look at this system uh, you can see that we're starting to see of course continuing to see those outer bands move in this is what we've been looking at uh, really for the past several hours now that eye where you see that center cleared out that is the eye surrounding that is the worst part of the storm there where we currently have the strongest of the winds we're now seeing lightning within that too which unfortunately it is a sign of some strengthening. So this system, it is going to be very powerful. And unfortunately, with the latest from the National Hurricane Center, we have seen a shift in our forecast cone. Let me show that to you right now, where we are now expecting a landfall in areas like uh, Lee County or Charlotte County. Let's get a closer look at that forecast cone, a close-up shot there. This is the track taking it into, you can see here, 
Sanibel, Captiva, forecasting it to move over areas like uh, Boquilia into the Charlotte Harbor and then out through Punta Gorda as a major hurricane. Unfortunately, this is not a good scenario for us. This is going to be leading to big time storm surge, which is something that we've kind of been now predicting here over the past about 12, 24 hours as we continue to see these shifts to the southeast. And this does mean we have now a high likelihood that our area will be experiencing that eye wall where right now we're clocking winds on a velocity of about 120 miles per hour in spots. It is going to be a very strong system, uh, certainly no doubt about that. Now we still have the potential, remember because this is a system that runs parallel to the coast, if it shifts even a little bit down the road here, to the west, that would mean that we could see little less impacts. It could also, though, be shifting still farther south and east. These are the things that we'll be watching here. But right now, regardless, we are going to be looking at some significant impacts. We're beginning to feel those right now, but the time of the most impacts is going to really kick off once we start to see daylight today. And we're expecting landfall sometime, I would say, between noon and 6 p.m. It's going to depend on how far south or how far north across the coast is. But noon to 6 p.m. is when we're really going to be in the thick of things and looking at what's going to be kind of our worst conditions when it comes to the rain and the wind, when it comes to also that storm surge threat as we start to see all that water being pushed up across our coastal zone. So let's take a look at that storm surge threat. With this latest forecast cone, we have seen now upgrades to our numbers for Collier County. So Collier County, if you're from Bonita Beach southward, Along the Collier County coast, we have seen those numbers increase now to 6 to 10 feet. Uh, as far as our storms, uh, potential storm surge map goes, and this is the one with a lot of colors, I will say the National Hurricane Center cautions using this just because it's a reasonable worst case scenario, but we'd rather prepare for the worst. If you have not yet evacuated in these areas in red, Right now is your time to do so. It doesn't mean you don't have to go far. You can just go to a friend's house that's a little bit farther inland. Uh, but these areas, you need to be evacuated and take this situation seriously. We're looking at the potential of seeing over nine feet of storm surge for these areas in red. And you see these time frames on here. These are the high tide time frames. That's when we're going to be looking at the water being pushed up against the shore coupled with the fact that it's going to be at its highest level from high tide. Now I will say storm surge forecasts, they do forecast in high tide. That is baked into the forecast. Uh, but this would be a better scenario if it were more towards it, rather the landfall, the time that's going to be parallel was more towards the low tide time frame. Unfortunately, that's not the case. By around anywhere between 3 to 6 p.m. where those high tides are showing, Boca Grande, Gasparilla Sound, Englewood, Charlotte Harbor, that's about the same time that the system is going to be paralleling the coast. And that's the same time we get that onshore flow that pushes this water up against those coastal lines. So there's a look into Charlotte County. This is Lee County. Same kind of messaging. Our high tides range anywhere from 2.38 p.m. in Captiva to 5.41 p.m. in Mat Lachey, 6.13 p.m. in Cape Coral, and 7.06 p.m. in Fort Myers. Similar, as we see these tides rise at the same time, we're going to start to see that onshore flow, that water being pushed up from Ian in its strong wind field. Notice those areas in red. Those have issued or are under evacuation orders. Again, uh, right now, you're going to be, if you do evacuate, dealing with some rain, some gusty winds, but nothing you can't handle if you have not evacuated in those areas. I highly recommend doing so because we will be looking at the potential of seeing nine, perhaps up to 12 feet, as you just saw on that storm surge range that I gave you for both Charlotte and Lee County. Traveling farther south into Collier County, these areas in red here, uh, this is for everyone from basically the Naples area, at least if you're along Naples Bay here. Uh, we've got some yellow there as well, along with orange. Here is uh, around the downtown Naples area, Naples Bay. Traveling farther south, let's go over to Marco Island. Uh, we've got quite a bit of red and also orange for Marco Island. That indicates storm surge of six to nine feet. That high tide time frame is 321 for Marco Island. 
Everglades City, you are all in the red. That is for the potential of seeing storm surge of nine feet or over. And that high tide is around 335. If we go ahead, let's go ahead and time out Ian now with that future track model because I do want to show you what those winds could be potentially looking like. So this is about, this is this morning, very early on. We're seeing Ian approach the coast. From here, it starts to travel northward. This is 6 a.m. tomorrow. So call your county, your high tides while they do occur around 2 to 3 p.m. Likely going to start to see most of the storm surge beginning at 6 a.m. or so this morning, those winds pushing that storm surge up. That is going to create those certainly uh, water inundation for areas like Everglades City. The water doesn't have anywhere to go at that point in time. It pushes it up against the coast and it kind of just piles there. 6 a.m. today, we're going to start to see that then begin piling up also for areas as this travels northward like Lee County. Estero a Bay over towards Sanibel, Captiva. This is 8.30 this morning. Here is the eye of the system. We continue with this onshore flow for the 10,000 Islands area, Chukaluski, Everglades City, Marco Island. At that point in time, you're going to start to see that storm surge uh, kind of piling up. As we travel northward, you can notice kind of the progression of the storm surge here. As the system travels northward, the storm surge is going to be shifting northward. So we're looking at 1030. We start to see this piling up across areas like Estero Bay, Fort Myers Beach. There is that southerly onshore flow that piles up the water. And here's that center of circulation. By that point in time, we're also going to begin to see the water levels rise along the Clusahatchee River at that point in time, areas like Pine Island Sound. As this travels north, and you can see this model, it does show that landfall pretty close to what the National Hurricane Center is showing. Somewhere across Captiva, Sanibel, into the Charlotte Harbor, here are those winds piling up by 1.30, 2 p.m. That's when we'll be looking at those storm, uh, storm surge rising in those areas. And then out towards areas like Captiva, Sanibel, and those are around the times, 2, 3 p.m., that we're going to be looking at high tide. So again, it's around that landfall time frame that we will see uh, some of the highest storm surge potential. We're talking about anywhere between about noon today through about 6 p.m. And then we continue to see that even with the storm exiting as we head into tonight. So even with the system beginning to pull away, we're still looking at an onshore flow that continues to pile up the water. As we head into tomorrow, we're going to start to see at least some improvements. So this is a very strong system and one to be taken seriously. It is a Category 3 hurricane with 120 mile per hour max sustained winds right now. Uh, we are going to continue to track this out and I will have much more in regards to what we're expecting with rain. I'm going to time out the winds fully coming up in just a bit. Uh, but right now I'm going to toss it back to Corey and Lindsay. All right, Casey, thank you. And if you're looking at the 11 p.m. update and hoping maybe there's going to be a change at this point, folks, this is very much a southwest Florida storm. We do get our next full advisory at five o'clock in the morning, and that's when Casey and Nash Roads and our team are going to be alerting you. But I think waiting to see if it shifts west it doesn't matter at this point. We are going to feel the brunt of this. Yeah, you know, earlier I even think Chief Meteorologist Matt Devitt said the time has passed for those major shifts um, you know so we know that this is going to be a storm that's going to be devastating parts of southwest florida and we have been preparing for that so let's go to reporter liz byro who is on vanderbilt beach uh, liz what are the effects you're feeling right now well, I, mean, if, I don't know if you guys can hear it at home, but the wind is just howling. It's whistling. And the trees, you can see, they'll stop for a little bit. The wind will slow down, and then it will just pick right back up again. The palm fronds will just start spinning around, and the rain is definitely coming down. Like you said, we're at Vanderbilt Beach Resort, and this seems to be one of the few hotels that is still open and not evacuated. Now, the staff has been very kind to us, brought us water, checking in. But right now, it seems that they are locked in now. The lobby is closed, and we'll bring you more updates as they come in but stay safe out there for now in Naples. Liz Byro, Wink News. All right, Liz, thank you very much. Uh, and if we can, show uh, the Punta Gorda camera because this gives you a good idea of what it's like outside, even a lot of lightning coming in. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the wind and a lot of the rain coming down. It's been coming down now, for, um, I'd say, for since Tuesday morning, since earlier this morning, a steady rain. So if you have a pool in your backyard, you're probably seeing the pool 
start to get fuller and fuller already. And those low-lying areas that yeah. we know of that traditionally flood just with our heavy rainstorms going to be dealing with a lot of that too. Again, this is a live look. Fisherman's Village is what you were looking at in Punta Gorda. I'd like to turn now to Adriana Shepard, who is joining us from downtown Fort Myers, an area that is very quiet. We saw businesses boarding up yesterday. And Andy, how is it where you are? Still very quiet, not seeing many people, if people at all. I did see a man just over this way walking his dog, but he's since disappeared. I would assume that he went back inside. And in terms of weather, pretty quiet too. It's a little windy. It's a little annoying, if anything, but it's nothing bad. You can see a little bit of the wind in the tree back here, but nothing terrible. Same goes with the rain. It's a slight sprinkle, barely anything at all. We've definitely seen worse in our normal everyday afternoon storms. So that doesn't mean it's going to be like this all day. Still a little windy, still a little rainy, still very, very empty. The water doesn't look terribly bad right now either. It is kind of moving out toward the Caloosahatchee, if I could pick a direction that way. But still not a terrible condition out here right now. Just a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain, but all in all, pretty quiet. Live in downtown Fort Myers, Andriana Shepard, Wink News. And when she talks about the water moving out, that is something that we saw firsthand oh, yeah. in 2017 with Hurricane Irma. It's, it's kind of an eerie moment, but you see that reverse storm surge where everything goes out. And then that's when you know eventually after Ian moves through is when we are going to see the surge come in. So yeah. we'll deal with the wind and then we'll get the storm surge. And speaking of the storm surge, this is a big reason why these mandatory evacuations were ordered earlier today uh, for many parts of Lee County and Charlotte County as well. Let's go over to uh, Taylor Petrus showing those evacuation zones. And Taylor, I have a lot of questions and viewers asking, how can I find out my specific address and what zone I am in? Sure, Corey Lindsay. So the, we have a really great map here um, from Florida Disaster on uh, the emergency management page for the state. Really maps out the colors that you need to be looking at. And you can even put in your address to really pinpoint and find out what zone you're in. So here in Lee County, we know mandatory evacuations for all of A, B, parts of C. So A is in the red here. These are our coastal barrier areas, also areas along the waterway. So you should probably know you're in zone A. They made those evacuation orders at 7 o'clock yesterday, giving you ample amount of time to prepare, make a plan, find a place to go if you do need to. So again, they are our coastal areas. We have Captita and Sanibel, uh, Pine Island, Mat Lache, parts of Cape Coral even, going down to Estero, Fort Myers Beach, even along the Caloosahatchee. Even though you're just by water, you don't have to be by a beach. Those storm surges are possible. Zone B is in orange. So again, those are parts of Cape Coral. Uh, also going into other parts of Fort Myers. That's in the Whiskey Creek, Fort Myers Villas area. Down by, um, down by uh, the shops down there, Bell Tower shops. Going into San Carlos Park. And then parts of C, those are in yellow as well. We have all this information for you, of course, on winknews.com to help you know where you are. Again, up here. You can type in your address to even pinpoint it even further. And as we've been talking about, we are already starting to see some of those rains and that some wind coming through our area. We are already experiencing power outages. I want to show you uh, this picture from Punta Gorda. They put this out just a couple hours ago showing this picture of linemen staged and ready to go right there in downtown Punta Gorda, ready to respond as soon as it is safe to respond to those power outages. And we are starting to see those already here coming in overnight, taking a look at uh, LCEC's map. Uh, we are seeing several outages right now. Nothing crazy from LCEC customers, uh, just a few here and there. And important to note during this time, they cannot guarantee you when this is going to be back on for you. They are going to wait as soon as it's safe to get out there, try to restore your power. You do have to be patient. And they say the numbers that you may see on this outage map may not be accurate either. So take that in consideration as we move through the next 24 hours. So at LCEC's map, 
I can't zoom in very far here, but it looks like we have some uh, on Pine Island, a couple on Sanibel, some parts in South Cape Coral, looks like a couple maybe near the downtown Fort Myers, possibly North Fort Myers area as well. Not too many at the moment. Taking a look at FPL's outage map, I believe Lee is the most right now with uh, a little more than a thousand people without power right now. I was seeing about 500 in Collier County. Actually, the worst of those outages right now over on the East Coast, places like Broward, Palm Beach, uh, uh, Palm Beach County, where they saw some tornadoes move through just a couple hours ago. And uh, I've seen videos of those trees knocked down some pretty significant wind and storms moving through the east coast of Florida. So they actually have more power outages right now. But again, this is something we are going to keep an eye on. We are expecting as we move through the next 24 hours. And again, those linemen, they are going to wait, ride out the storm as soon as it is safe. They are going to get out there, try to restore your power as quickly as they can. But you do need to be patient. Also a good time to have uh, all your devices charged at this time. That way you can stay with us here at Wink News as we continue to track Hurricane Ian. Taylor, thank you. And, you know, in talking with FPL back when we did our uh, hurricane special, mm -hmm. uh, FPL has the smart grids now. So they're going to know exactly where the power is out. They say if we have power outages, you don't have to necessarily report it because they can zero in of where they have to respond to first. LCEC also saying if it's a widespread outage, don't worry about reporting it because they're more than likely going to already know. And unfortunately, I think as we look at the eye wall, you noting it's very defined now. We are going to be yeah. dealing with power outages. It's not if, it's a matter of when. We are going to take a short break and check in with meteorologist Casey Sherman afterward. But as we leave you here, I'd like to give you a live look in Key West at the southernmost wow. point. I know it is very dark, but look there and you see the waves crashing over that yeah. iconic red buoy. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. When you think Miami, lots of things come to mind. But when you think Homestead Miami, it's everything. The vibrancy of South Beach and the calm of the Keys. It's where you get a weekend of a million thrills, leading to one of the final chances to make it to the championship four. It's everything we all think of when we think Miami, but so much more. I love this damn track. Get your tickets now at homesteadmiamispeedway.com. And it's Liberty Bell, closest to the rear. Drama to every drive. The exhilarating Audi SUV family. Hey, off-roaders, decorators, even lunchtimers. AutoNation Toyota is here for you and every driver, and we love getting you on the road. Right now, lease a new 2022 Toyota Highlander for just $369 a month, or new 2023 Camry for only $279 a month. Hurry to AutoNation Toyota or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. AutoNation Toyota. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but Basic. Get 1.9% financing for 36 months on 10 models, like Rogue, with best-in-class fuel economy. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Well, welcome back to Wink News here. Uh, we are going to bring in our meteorologists, Nash Rhodes and Casey Sherman. They're fine-tuning this forecast. But we're getting a lot of different questions from you. And, uh, you know, this is the next 24 hours is really when we are going to be in the main weather event. First of all, let's start with that shift just so slightly. Casey, I'd like to ask you, you know, Collier County, we've been telling you all along to be prepared. Yeah. But unfortunately that shift, it's now impacting that area mm -hmm. more. And I was thinking as Taylor was highlighting uh, the evacuations, folks along Bonita Beach Road who maybe were debating that now, mm -hmm. they were in Lee County, but right on that county line, zone B. 
uh, what should they be anticipating and even further south into the, the heavy portion of Collier County on the coast here now we're talking. Right, yeah, if you are on, are on the coast, I mean, the likelihood of seeing storm surge for those immediate coastal areas of Collier County, it is likely. We're forecasting storm surge five to about eight feet there, where you are also going to be feeling some strong winds. I will say coastal Collier probably, probably won't see the brunt mm -hmm. of the impacts. Um, but if you can evacuate, if you are in those evacuation zones that have had those evacuation orders, that's for a reason. You know, uh, right. the, the officials give that because if you do perhaps have a medical emergency and you stay, there is a chance that the uh, medical emergency or rather the emergency officials, they won't be able to get to you. Firefighters, policemen, um, you know, people that do work for emergency sure. services. So I would just, in my opinion, heed those warnings. I know it's kind of hard because you want to stay with your home in this scenario. Yeah. You want to make sure everything goes smoothly. But those evacuation orders, they are issued for a reason. And especially when you account for, and they do account for this from those emergency officials, they account for these possible wobbles and they over prepare. Uh, but that's what you should be doing. You want to over prepare. It's always better to safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when we got that new 11 o'clock uh, forecast cone, that was a very sobering moment, I think, mm -hmm. for a lot of people yeah. who were on the verge of leaving. Uh, I have family members who's, who saw that and said, okay, like now is the yeah. time to leave. So we're all in this together. You know, we all have to make those decisions. Um, I want to get uh, Nash to a question from a viewer, Wendy, and I'm getting questions from people who are living southern but inland. Uh, she lives in Golden Gate Estates asking, what are they going to be feeling even if they are further away from the coastline? The important thing to remember with Ian specifically is, of course, every storm is different, and Ian is a very large storm and growing still. We're looking at a wind field of tropical storm force winds that could extend roughly 300 miles, if not just wow. under that, away from the storm. So inland zones will more likely than not feel those tropical storm force winds. Potentially, we could even see hurricane force winds inland, depending on where exactly that eye makes landfall and how far it stays consolidated as it tracks inland eventually. And so you don't just have to look at, obviously, the coastline is going to bear the brunt of it. But even if you live inland, you're going to be feeling this storm. Mm -hmm. And that's why you need to be thinking about, if you haven't already, identify that interior part of your home. For yeah. me, it's the laundry room, you know, the closet maybe, the pantry, all places. You know, you shouldn't be seeing the storm. Hopefully you've got those shutters up, but on top of that, you still want to have that extra protection, that layer. And we are simulcasting on 96.9 and 101.1. So you guys are going to be here along with Chief Neurologist Matt Devitt walking people through and saying, okay, just because it's quiet does not necessarily mean it's safe to go outside. Let's prepare people, Casey, for what's to come during the daylight hours. When do you think, starting south, working north, we're going to start to see the main event for this? Main event, it's probably going to begin for Collier County first. So we're talking about for Collier County about 6 a.m., I would say, through 11 a.m. for some of the strongest of the winds. But even as that system moves north of Collier County throughout the day and it's beginning to pass your area, Storm surge on the back side of it's still going to be an issue. Moving up through Lee County, I would say beginning at around 10, 11 a.m., those winds really starting to pick up, continuing through about 3, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock into this evening. And these times may be a little bit shifting. It depends on if how far south sure. this makes landfall. If yeah. it is more of a southerly track, uh, that means you could be feeling those impacts a bit earlier. If it's more of a northerly track, a little bit later there. Uh, but I would say plan for in Lee County, biggest time frame is going to be between 10 a.m. through about 5, 6 p.m. Charlotte County, kind of similar timing. And even as the system moves northward, though, into tonight, Storm surge is really going to still be felt on the back side of it, and that's going to be kind of our main concern from this system just in general. I think a lot of us, we can handle the winds, we can handle the rain. It's the water, the rising water that you can't, you know, right. really run from. And, mm -hmm. and, and let's talk about the storm surge because, you know, you may start seeing that water rise, especially if you live along the water, and think, okay, not too bad. It keeps rising, though, after mm -hmm. the storm, and that's right. where we get into that trouble. Right, yeah, and even as the winds, you know, lighten up, you're thinking, and right. the rain lightens up, oh, the storm's past us. Uh, but with this kind of track, you know, it's going to continue to pile up, and with a persistent onshore wind, it's going to prevent it from receding for a while, and, and that's really kind of the key message with storm surge. Okay. Uh, 
I know I had so many friends text me saying the tornado warnings from late last <laughs> night, you know, through the mm -hmm. evening, kept my kids up. I texted my husband, how are our kids doing? Nash, tornadoes, are those still a threat until we get into the main event as we are in entering now the early morning hours of Wednesday? Yeah, unfortunately, tornadoes will likely, or at least tornado warnings, will likely be the new norm for the next 24 to 36 hours or so. As that eye wall gets closer to us and as those storms continue to grow and get stronger within the uh, strongest of those inner bands, I think we'll start to see that threat increase, especially within the next six hours. Many of our models actually maximize that tornado threat, and that's why those tornado watches were extended farther north earlier this morning. You may have gotten those alerts for that. Mm. We heard them. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, yes. they're, they're very startling. Mm. And we were talking about finding that location in your home. You know, even my daughter was kind of walking through the house questioning, okay, where are we going to go if one of these tornadoes does pop up? I want to pull up uh, the satellite image. I believe it's on Weather One, Weather One. And this just shows you how large this storm is, KC. This is a massive storm, very well defined at this point. It is, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we are anticipating even additional strengthening. And you can see kind of this span this takes up. We're seeing those outer bands right now reach all the way to portions of the Bahamas, down through Cuba, and of course, up through our area. Where we're seeing some of those rain bands push through. We've begun to see those winds get gusty. And as it continues to travel northward, we could see that wind field expand even more. So, you know, we've been saying throughout the week, this track, it's reminiscent of Charlie. Uh, but the thing is, this is a much larger storm than Charlie. So the impacts are going to be felt a bit wider because of the fact that this is just a larger system. And we know you guys are going to be here with us, walking us through all of that. We are just hearing from our producer that the winds are really picking up on Fort Myers Beach. And I believe reporter Annette Montgomery is live there for us now. Annette, walk us through what you're hearing and seeing out there. Lindsay, I have to tell you, this is an area that is experiencing some serious wind. I'm actually going to have my photographer show you. We have sandbags on top of this light, and it keeps flying. I've actually been flying myself at certain points because of this wind. It's just really bad. I'm going to show you actually behind me. You can see a downed palm tree. Right now, we haven't seen any trees down, but I will tell you, we told you all yesterday afternoon that we saw... Fort Myers Beach gas stations boarded up, and I can confirm they are still boarded up today. And not only are the windows and doors boarded up on the buildings, but all of the gas pumps that we have passed do have bags on top of them, so none of the gas stations are open. Now I'm going to walk over to this side because I know that you all have, you all have been talking about the water today, and I just. And we apologize. Yeah. It sounds like we're going to be losing a little bit of connectivity issues with um, Annette, who again is giving us a live picture on Fort Myers Beach. We'll try and check back in with her. That's that's bound to happen as our yep. crew's live television. Things are kind of moving all around there, but she was explaining very windy conditions. We're going to leave her there just to kind of give us an idea of what's going on a little bit through the morning. But then at some point we are going to be moving her to. We right. want to make sure all of our crews stay safe out there. If we can, let's take a camera uh, looking at the Sanibel Causeway. And here you can see, uh, I know it's dark, but the water, we're starting to see that negative surge, the water being sucked out more and more from this storm. Uh, and uh, reporter Claire Galt is on Sanibel right now, an area where evacuations have been taking place. Claire, what are you noticing on Sanibel out there? I imagine it's pretty quiet at this point. I'm standing out here on the balcony of my hotel right now, and it's too dark for you to see, but there is water here behind me. Now, I'm starting to notice that that water is getting a little bit choppier, rain is getting a little bit heavier, and wind is picking up a bit. Now, about 15 minutes ago, my photographer Jack and I drove by the Sanibel Causeway to try to get an idea of what's going on, and we saw a similar situation, water starting to get a bit choppier. Now, like you guessed, the island is pretty quiet. We really haven't seen anybody at all except for one family who was checking into our hotel about an hour ago. They told me they left their home in Cape Coral because they were scared of flooding. And so they came all the way here to Sanibel, packed up their family of five and their puppy and checked into this hotel because they told me they thought being at an elevated height in a hotel would be a better option. Well, we uh, knew some people here and they said that we could get a room. So we decided to come here because it's safer because of the surge. And you never know how bad it's going to be until it's coming directly at you. So we decided to be wise and go higher ground. 
Now remember that evacuation order for Sanibel is mandatory. So the city is urging you to evacuate. And as of 10 p.m. last night, fire and EMS will not be taking any calls. In fact, they are off of the island. So if you choose to stay here, if you choose not to evacuate and you need help, you're on your own. Live in Sanibel, Claire Galt, Wink News. Thanks, Claire. And I think if you are thinking about that, I want to just read a little bit of a message from the Sanibel mayor, mm -hmm. Holly Smith. She emailed this to our team uh, yesterday, and it says, I left our island about an hour ago, and I can tell you it was surreal to drive a deserted periwinkle way and cross that causeway. And she says, I know it's difficult to leave your home in our island, even in the face of a hurricane, but evacuating before Ian arrives is critically important. There's so many new folks down here, Corey. I know it's scary, and Casey mentioned this earlier, you want to be by your home. Mm -hmm. If you are in those evacuation zones, you really need to heed the warning. Like Casey mentioned, there's science to this, and they are taking into account worst case scenario here, and we need to prepare for that so you're not left stranded somewhere. And look, it's a very emotional thing, you know, to leave your it's home tough. and all your memories and your items behind, but sometimes you have to make that really tough decision for the for your for your life and your family's life even your pets um, but if you are not in one of those evacuation zones maybe further inland mm -hmm. and you're staying put uh, let's get over to KC because she has some great advice for us on what you guys should be doing if you are staying put inside your home yeah I mean one of the things you have to prepare for of course even if you're inland and you're not in those evacuation zones uh, is a, certainly the potential for power outages and also not getting water or gas so remember fill that bathtub you'll want to also adjust your refrigerator the coldest setting the reason why you want to fill your bathtub Tub is you can use that water, take a bucket, set it out next to your bathtub, and use it to refill your toilet, uh, the tank there that's on the top to be able to flush it. Also, you can use that uh, down the road if you do need something to bathe with, water in sinks, adjust refrigerator, the coldest setting now before you lose power because it'll be at least at its coldest and try to prevent opening it as much as you can if you do lose power to keep your food from spoiling. Also, another tip here is going to be fully charge those cell phones and if you have a portable charger, try to charge that as well. I look that safe space we have already had some ongoing tornado warnings across the area and with the potential and unfortunately with the latest hurricane national hurricane center forecast comb it is looking more likely that we are going to see the eye wall of the system move through our area that's essentially just a prolonged period of time where you're looking at tornado-like winds. So locate that safe space in an interior room of your home away from windows bathtubs are great that extra plumbing if you've not filled the bathtub that is with water uh, or just in the bathroom in general that extra plumbing that surrounds the bathroom if it's an interior room it actually adds to a little bit of additional structure when it comes to the potential of seeing some of those extremely strong and damaging winds also turn off major appliances if you do have a power outage that's to reduce the chance of damage from storm surge the generator if you have one it needs to to be a minimum distance of 15 feet from the home. So that does not mean putting it in the garage. It does not mean having it in a far away room in your home. It needs to be outside and it needs to be about 15 feet away. So all good tips if you are planning on staying, and a lot I'm sure a lot of people have, if you're not in those evacuation zones, uh, you'll be able to ride out the storm. Those that are in the evacuation zones though, there is a reason why you had an, a mandatory evacuation. And if you have not yet left, I would highly encourage you to do so. Wink Slide Doppler 3X showing the center of the system as it continues to make its way away from Cuba, bringing outer bands through portions of the Keys, where that center of circulation, that eye, is currently about 98 miles away now from Marco Island. Of course, this is the strongest part of that storm where we have begun to see quite a bit of lightning across the eye wall that is a sign of strengthening and we could certainly see additional strengthening in fact our forecast to see additional strengthening into a category four hurricane with a landfall now projected here in South Florida. It is a very serious situation. I don't want to scare anyone, but this is a very uh, serious scenario uh, that we have been 
preparing for, for the potential of, we've said throughout this week, it has a potential of shifting south and east, and we still could see that even today. Any little wobble a mile to the east, a mile to the west will eventually make a big time track difference in where this thing makes landfall. If you were here for Charlie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This eye wall, it's about 14 to 20 miles wide. That is going to be the region featuring those winds of up to around 120 miles per hour. Locally right now, many of us were just dealing with some light to moderate rain, some gusty winds. Again, if you have not yet evacuated for those areas where we, they had mandatory evacuations, not bad right now. I would say do it. And remember, you don't have to evacuate very far. You can just head to a friend's house that's inland. Even that would make a huge difference. Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda right now dealing with some light to moderate rain, some quick bands passing through the area. We've been tracking some rotation from time to time. Thankfully, we have not had any reports of tornadoes touching the ground here in our area. Though you may have uh, kind of woke up to what was some loud soundings on your phone. We had some tornado warnings issued even for Lee County earlier this morning. And this is going to be a potential really as we head throughout the day today and we continue to see these bands rotate in across our area and it's that kind of high wind field that it's in the upper levels of the atmosphere from this hurricane that along with the friction from the ground that leads to that high potential of seeing quick tropical spin-ups. The good news is they tend to not last very long, but they still can be very destructive. So wind speeds right now, these are our sustained winds. Currently they are picking up as anticipated. They're running anywhere between about 17 to 28 miles per hour on Sanibel. And you'll notice that direction is currently out of the east to northeast. And that's what's currently bringing the tide out actually at the moment. Uh, we will continue to see that happen with reverse storm surge as we head through the rest of tonight. So if you're waking up tomorrow morning with that first daylight, and if you do live on those waterways and you did not cover your windows with hurricane shutters, you may see that the water has receded quite a bit for those waterways. We already saw that yesterday in areas like Fort Myers Beach down through Naples Beach, and certainly we'll be waking up to some of that today. Keep in mind, though, it's going to go the other way. There's going to be a moment in time where it gets and goes back to normal. And then from that point onward, we're going to start to see the water levels rise. So I just want to time out what kind of progression we're looking at as far as the storm surge goes. Here's the center of circulation of Ian. As we travel through the overnight time frame, this is 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. We're still looking at an offshore flow for most areas, but we're beginning to see some water pile up for areas like Sanibel and along the eastern side of Captiva. From there, the system moves northward. Notice that southerly wind at about 10 a.m. Areas like Chukaluski, Everglades City, 10,000 Islands, you're going to start to see that water rise, water pushing towards the shore. This is also going